Jim Carter. Jim Carter, I went to high school to Jimmy Carter. Uh, Jimmy Carter was president. The president? I think that was good. That's good for TV right there. Hello, good evening. Oh, hey. Hello. Boy, I'm a little rusty. Welcome. Well, it's been, been a couple weeks. For it you. has been. Welcome to STSBN and Friday Night Lights live from Veterans Memorial Stadium in Snohomish, Washington. Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle, Ron the Wedge, Henthorn, and the Five Tool Player Skeleton Crew tonight. Crew tonight. Uh, how are you doing, Tim Boyle? I'm doing good for Friday the 13th. And yes. Mixed emotions, though. The Cougs are playing tonight. Big I know. Sacrifice. We've for, got the big screen TV in we the do. booth for them. Maybe hey, Todd can get a shot of that at some point. Another, ooh, another Clemson player. Yeah, 24-24 Clemson, Syracuse. If but, this, if you're not paying attention to that. Yeah, that's a Friday the 13th score for you. That's <laughs> that frightening. Is. I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah, unranked Syracuse. Clemson's number two. Yeah, and they think they should be number one. Well, they could be. They, they, they got a legitimate argument. They were defending national champs and undefeated. As this is we're seeing from the field, and we will step away as the color guard court comes in. We're getting ready for kickoff. It's Glacier Peak and Mariner. When you shop at Ace Hardware and Lake Stevens, you're not only find what you need, we make sure you get the help you need too. Hi, this is Gray Eaglestead, and I own Lake Stevens Ace Hardware with my wife, Christine. We'll greet you at the door and answer any questions you have about what you need. We're all about serving our customers and our community. We support local high school sports and many other Lake Stevens organizations and events throughout the year. So the next time you need something for that job around the house and a little friendly advice, come see us. Ace Hardware and Lake Stevens, we are the helpful hardware folks. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware. Did you know that Speedway Chevrolet is part of the Lee Johnson Auto family? That means 84 years of serving you the LJ way. Need a truck? We have the perfect truck to fit your needs. Half tons, one ton, two wheel drives, and four wheel drives. Our finance specialists are here to help you whether you have good credit or bad credit. We're just off Highway 522 at West Main Street in Monroe. Lee Johnson Auto family. We are all frustrated with the high cost of heating and cooling our homes. At GNS, we are completely changing the way you keep your home comfortable. Our Mitsubishi ductless heat pumps allow you to control the temperature in each room separately, all of which can be controlled from your smartphone or tablet. Because we are the mini split experts here in Washington, we can design a perfect system for you, one that will save you a lot of money on your utility bill. Call GNS Heating, Cooling, and Electrical today or visit us at gsheating.com. For a Western Conference football here live on STSPN, welcome in once again Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle, Ron, the Wedge, Henthorn. You see the color guard coming through tonight. The Mariner Marauders under the direction of Mark Stewart and Glacier Peak Grizzlies under the head coach of Nick Bender. And this, Tim Boyle, is actually an important game. I mean, it's a it's a league game, but it, it's got playoff implications already. It does. It's much more important than people might think. This, this just kind of like last year, kind of is probably going to determine who might be third and fourth going into the playoffs or who who stays home during the playoffs. The, you, you know, if Mariner loses this, they could end up being the number five spot. They're one and two in conference right now where – GP's uh, two and two. So right now, Glacier Peak's sitting in a little bit better of a position. But both teams, I think, are desperate to win this. They both need a win. They're both coming coming off big back-to-back -back losses. GP's coming up off worse back-to-back -back losses. But uh, uh, yeah, very important for both teams with huge playoff implications. And if you're Glacier Peak, it's almost a revenge game. Last year, Mariner beating GP 27-20 for the third playoff spot. And a lot of these kids, you know, there's a lot of new kids, but this is, uh, they can't take this for granted by any stretch. No, and you're right, it was Glacier Peak. Mariner had to come back to win that. And Mark Stewart, the coach of Mariner, if you've been around for a while, Glacier Peak and Mark Stewart have gone head to head many, many times. Mark Stewart used to be the coach of Meadowdale, and Meadowdale and GP used to have some real battles, some real exciting battles that we've actually called over the years. but. 
Meadow, did, Mark Stewart's always got his team prepared. Always. And, and if you want ball control and a running offense, that's what Mariner brings out. Number 14, the senior quarterback, Fama. And he is the man who spins the ball. And you don't know, they've got all kinds of weapons running the ball. Number 34, uh, Isaiah Harrison, also number four, CJ. But they talk about common opponents here as we're getting ready for kickoff. Mariner did win the coin toss that they deferred. So GP will get the ball first. We can kind of talk about their common opponents. And we got to get to the predictions here as well, Tim. Yeah, common opponent. I'd say their most common, common opponent is Cascade, where they're about all at the same. We'll come back to that in just a minute. It's taken around the five-yard line for Glacier Peak. And that's Briggs. He's going to be at about the almost the 30, maybe the 29. But their most, their common opponent that's probably the closest in talent is Cascade. And GP actually beat Cascade, and Mariner lost to Cascade. Both, you know, pretty close games. Now, that being said, if you're for the Mariner, you'd say, well, we only lost to Lake Stevens 14 to three, and you guys lost to him 63 to 14. That would be their comeback for that. So. What about predictions before the GP starts here? Go through them, Tim. All right. Uh, I went GP 34-27. Scott said 28-26 GP. Ron 34-26 Mariner. He's going to lose some fans there. <laughs> and then hold on. Zeomis drops it down, and it's Anthony Collins. Not a great play there. He's actually going to lose a few yards on that pass. It's going to go down as a completed pass but uh, with a gloss of about three and then the five to a player says 31 28 gp tackle there jody natoa for the mariners second and 14 loss of four there baby z aiden Ziomis been roughed up the last couple weeks and he's going to take off here big move makes up for a lot of that loss and more he'll have third and maybe three or four as you see it we talked about this with head coach nick bender yeah now i'm not sure if that was a design run but he definitely saw the hole and took off really well this is that's something he couldn't quite do against lake stevens lake stevens had the angles on him all night long so hopefully he'll be able to extend some of these plays like that here we go third and four he almost back to pass and in and out of Evan. Evan Manis, the magnet. That time, he's got, the magnet wasn't working. <laughs> they haven't turned the magnet on. <laughs> got to get that going. He'll be, he'll warm up here. So brings up a fourth uh, down. Quick, quickly brings up a fourth down. Glacier Peak. I think they were eager to get their offensive roll, roll, and they, you know, they had it tied up with Lake Stevens at 14-14, and then it just nothing else happened after that. They just couldn't get anything rolling and. So they're anxious. They, the coaches said they're going kind of back to basics tonight. And big news, you'll see if you saw 51, uh, Ma'ake Fafita back in after his injury several weeks ago. Back to punt is Braden Corwin. That's a good punt. That is a Look nice one. Look at that one. bounce. Big that roll bounce. down to the 15. That's a great special teams play right there. Now. Mariner, you're going to see them coming out, and typically Mark Stewart's teams really like to run the ball. You know, that's just that's kind of their bread and butter. They will throw it, but they definitely like to run the ball. Whereas GP is more of a passing spread offense. You're going to see what he they they called it a uh, sniffer sniffer wing T. They run which that was Rudd. Rudd. That was yeah. defensive coordinator for GP. Uh, Mike Rudd called it a sniffer sniffer wing T. So well, kind of a offshoot version of a wing T. Here comes the sniffer right at you. And you have number 14, Fama. And he hands it off up the middle. And that's number 12. We heard about number 12. That's Pesterkoff, the 5'8", 215-pound sophomore. And that's the other thing Mark Stewart, the head coach for the Mariners, said we got a lot of sophomores we're playing. Yeah, and they, especially at the beginning of the year, they were really loaded up with sophomores. And like we thought, like we thought, they're starting off right up with that wing T running the ball. Update 27-24 Syracuse. My goodness, second and four at their own 21-yard line. Fama, uh, no, this time actually it's kind of the wildcat. I want to say, I think to number 12 one more time. It is a little bit of the 
kind of misdirection stuff. Josiah Pesterkoff, the ball carrier. He's going to bring up a third and real short, maybe third and one. I think they're marking it third and two. Defensive coordinator Mike Rudd for GP also saying they're going to try and for Ma'ake, he's not going to play on the defensive side of the ball tonight. They're going to start him on offense just to get him easing on back to yeah, it. Yeah, and that's a smart move. Third and two. He's got it. He's got it, and more. This is number three. That's another one, Romello Magnum. And he almost got it, got into the secondary there and uh, had a nice hole. Great job there by uh, Amory Brown, number 16, held his block there on the DB and gave him room. That is a Mariner first down. Yeah, and Mark Stewart, his teams, you'll – if he can just keep doing that, he'll do that all night long. Just kind of chip away at you four or five yards here and there. First pass of the night, a little swing pass, and it's covered well there by number 11, Dawson Crosby. Yeah, that Dawson stayed home right where he needed to be on that. Only gives up about two yards on that. Pass was complete to Brown for the Marauders. A lot of discussion in the booth before we went on on what is a marauder. Yeah, we were going back and forth, and it's kind of a, it's kind of a uh, rough name for this day and age. It's uh, yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. Now they pitch it right to number three once again. Here comes Mello oh. as coach Boy, and he Mark just Stewart got calls him num uh, number three on the tackle there. Uh, Aganaga. Aganaga, and he's kind of uh, shaken up, but he saved saved quite a few yards there, kind of grabbed him by his foot and held on tight. Another first down here for the Mariner Marauders. We're just underway. GP won three and out so far. But the Marauders, they're, it means a person or animal that goes from place to place trying to kill people. <laughs> we that's, what, that's what the I'm Google machine joking. said. I know. I, was, yeah. I, yeah, I saw We're it. Not I'm, surprised there's not pro I'm surprised there's not protesters on that that's, nickname. Yeah. First and 10. Boy, they started this drive at their own 15. This time it is a fake handoff. Here comes Fama. Tries to get wide. And good pursuit there by the Grizzlies. He just, he actually could have got, what he just didn't quite have the speed or he was taking his time going around the corner, but he had that corner open. He just couldn't quite get there quick enough. Heston, Charlton Heston Pettis there on the tackle. Glacier Peak coach is telling us before the game, they're just back to basics, uh, back to basics this week at practice and here second and eight. Fama back to pass. Now he's getting pressure. Oh, he, throws. And he fumbles as Boy, a release. I don't know. I, that's they're saying it's Glacier Peak ball. It's a fumble. Erling, Joshua Erling, 19. Right, he was all over him, and you can see it on the replay there. It kind of looked like he passed. It was almost like he was trying to throw it out of bounds. But uh, either way, they're saying that was a that was not a didn't go forward. Wow. I couldn't tell if it was a fumble or if he was trying to pass that thing. That's always when, when, they, when they're in the motion, you see that in NFL, they always slow it down because it's, you yeah. gotta, if it's actually a forward pass or, well, then do it. Todd, Todd Elvig. All right, here we go. Chiming in. So first and 10, Aiden Ziomis, the heralded junior quarterback, back to pass. Plenty of time going over the Look middle. Wide that. open. Look at Burns, that. Burns, 10, 5, touchdown, Glacier Peak, Bo Burns. And that's what you see a lot of times coming off a big turnover. They'll go for the throat right there because it's like they feel like they got the ball free. It's a freebie. And you'll always see that on first down coming off of a turnover. You'll see a big go for a big play. And that he was wide open down the seam. Bo Burns, a 46-yard reception, touchdown. And Glacier Peak is on top, 6-0, 721 left in the first quarter. Corwin on for the extra try. Boy, if you're the Mariner Marauders, you were trouble, you're causing trouble just plotting down field. Is there some And the turnover just there. cost you seven points, specifically on that turnover. One play. 46 yards, the you hold is good, and, and it is good. it is good. 7-0 Glacier Peak. 
Wow. How about that? Costly turnover. A huge turnover for the young Marauders. That was a great pass, but we should say that was a great pass. Uh, Aiden had Bo Burns wide open and just catches him right down the middle. Aiden Zion was adding to his big totals if you take out Lake Stevens and Monroe, where he didn't run much in well, either of them. he was trying. Them. He just didn't have any. They just seemed to close the gaps on him. And, you know, I, like I said, they had all the right angles. And it looked like they had the same pressure as all the other teams where Baby Z normally gets away. But they did a really good job of tackling him in those games. 17th touchdown pass for Aiden Ziomas on the season. 103 for 154 yards, around 1,500 yards completed so far in the season for number one, Baby Z. And then Bo Burns is stacking them up as well. But both teams need some confidence coming off their big losses for Monroe and Lake Stevens. Absolutely. And that's going to, oh, it's off his fingertips. and Mello. Luckily, the high school rule, they can't run that out. Would have been a live ball in the pros. They will start right there. Some other big games tonight. Tim Boyle around the league and uh, in Wesco in general. Well, that Ferndale, Oak Harbor. Now, Ferndale has to travel to Oak Harbor, but both those teams are undefeated, both sitting at 6-0. and Ferndale's ranked number two in the state. I think Oak Harbor in some polls are at number six. So that's a, just a huge game. It's, it's hard to travel. To Oak Harbor, for some reason, has a good, better home field advantage than just about anybody. The long bus ride. And, and, oh, and the 5 12 players saying the refs live there. There you go, Mello. Now it's reverse. And this is new number 16. The ball carry still not down. I didn't hear a didn't whistle. I didn't hear a whistle either. He ran into about six Glacier Peak players. And that's Brown again, Amory Brown. And they'll give a gain of five, Tim. Tackled by number 11, which is uh, Dawson That's Crosby, Crosby, right? yep. Yeah. He's been, been playing well, play. yeah, yeah, all year. Big test for this defense. Look at number 75 on the defensive line there. He is a big boy. That's Palmoffi. Oh, yeah, he is it's a big, strong-looking kid. Gets it to Mello, and this Look time the, the GP defense right there. Big anchor, the noose maker, <laughs> Graves. There's, you just earned your nickname, anchor. There you go. I love it, too. That is parent approved, <laughs> by the way. You had to check with his mom. Then that, by the way, this is the first time we've ever had to check what the parents are. We, That's true. You know, it's a new day. We normally don't do that. No. But we're, we're a little more no, you know, touchy-feely. Well, I happened to run into his... Uh, mom and dad and I had the rare opportunity I finally said hey I gotta run this one by you." is it oh. it is complete to number four and that's CJ Castile Zhao but and it was all it looked like the uh, him and uh, Charlton Heston Pettis were kind of fighting over it for a second I wasn't sure <laughs> that was gonna get completed yeah. but it was a nice play there it was a big first down pickup Mariner, the first series, six plays. They were driving, a couple first downs, and then all of a sudden, huge play by Joshua Erling. Sacks the quarterback, and it was a fumble. One play, Glacier Peak, 46 yard. The pass to number 32, Bo Burns. First and 10. They snap and it right, and again, that that's is smash mouth there. He just went right up the middle. And that's Isaiah Harrison, Tim, the other key player that we talked to head coach Mark Stewart about. Yeah, and they, they've got about three or four guys they're going to go with all, all night, and he's one of them. And he's a senior. He can fell out a uniform. 5'9", 220. Uh, <laughs> that's a big boy for 5'9 <laughs> in is, high school. That is uh. coming at you. Second and eight for the Marauders. Their second series of the game. GP up 7-0, 444 left in the first quarter. Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle will get down to Ron the Wedge Henthorn. Fama fakes it. Now he's got pressure by Anchor. 
Gets rid of it, out of bounds. Smart oh, play. what are they saying? Oh, man, he almost had him for a really long game on the sideline. He just didn't quite get two feet in bound. Or I was going to CJ again. Well, let's see if Ron saw Do we that. have another look at that? Let's, let's take one more. I think the crowd, the uh, players are going to be in the way there. Yeah, I didn't even think. I thought Boy, that was that out of was bounds. close. Say that one more time, Ronnie. Okay. See, that's why we got the wedge. Nobody does it like the wedge. Nobody breaks in and tells you when they're out of bounds like Ronnie the Wedge had thorn. Thank you, Ron. Ron would have thrown the challenge flag, too. <laughs> Third and eight. It's homecoming night for Glacier Peak. Oh. Fama rolling, has trouble, gets it out. Ooh. Off the hands of Harrison. And Incomplete. And Josh Erling was supplying some pressure from the blind side there. I don't think he knew Erling was coming. Erling already with two big plays. He want, he's As probably almost looking, ready to earn himself a nickname. He is, you're right. Stay tuned. We've got a debate about that. Well, it might come to us. He played some big minutes last year. We remember saw him kind of rise up. Erling, number 19. Yes, absolutely. Rising up even more this year. To punt. So this is what, okay, yeah, it's fourth and eight. We should have. Ethan oh, Scrabak almost went over his head. Is the punter, and he gets a decent one off. Bounces to see if it touches anybody. It almost did. The it Mariner gets it. It came real close to touching a Glacier Peak player there. I think uh, Mariner's saying it did. They're, 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 they think they, wait, have, they, the they think have the ball. Zerbrook Abram, but the official is saying he. Official's no. not signaling that. Ron, did you see anything down there, Ronnie? Uh, for me, but I, uh, I didn't see him touch it, but they did uh, recover the ball after they, after they might have touched it. Now they're, now they're uh, having a conference here. I don't like the fact that they're having it. Well, Glacier Peak. To, oh, no. Jim Carter oh, says. Oh, my. Now it's that a big, is a big play. And I, it, it kind of looked from here like it might have touched a guy. Do we have another look at that time? I'm not sure. Where's replay Rob when you need him? <laughs> He's celebrating the Cubs win. What a game that was last night. Four and a half hours It long. was a doozy. How long did that go? It, it, it went like four and a half hours. It, like back east, it was almost one in the morning. Yeah. There. That's what hurt. That hurts baseball a little bit, those yes. really long games on the east coast. and. The only people that are up watching it are the graveyard shift guys. And well, you don't know that. We can talk about the Huskies, uh, Chris Peterson. Oh. Mello, and he's taken down way behind the line of scrimmage. He's and gonna, that's Evan the Magnet Manis there first. Oh, man, and he's he told you he was going to warm right up. And uh, that's going to be a loss of about, what, seven, eight? I'm going to see where they marked that. They're marking it on the 44. Glacier Peak defense double Seven duty quickly loss, here. And that's a big, big tackle for a loss there. Sack. Mariner looking down. Longtime head coach Mark Stewart was at Meadowdale for several years. I think he took a year off yeah. or something, I think. Second and 17. Oh, Sam nice Fama takes direction. it himself. And he's pushed out of bounds near the 35, and they're going to help him up. Actually, eight. a nice little gain about eight or nine yards on that play. But kind of another misdirection where no one knew who had the ball there. And these kids, they aren't used to playing Bellevue like we were back in the day. I There's know. a nice, there's Sarah Elvig. Look at that. The manager tonight. There's always an Elvig in play. Always. You so thought you'd seen the last of them, but you haven't. It's third down and 10. The scoreboard, see if they'll correct that. Scoreboard saying fourth down, but that's not right. And now you have big 
Harrison there, but Mello, a nice hole on the left side. Holt comes up and grabs him, and he finally takes him down at the 32 short of a first down. You gotta think almost. the Mariner Marauders are gonna go for it here. Luckily, Holt slowed him down enough to get some other GP players there, because he was gonna be gone. Or he would've picked up the first down at least. That's gonna bring up fourth and four. It's, um, they're definitely in fourth down territory here. You would think. The Marauders. Fama takes it. He's gonna look, throw it. Nope. Incomplete. Turnover on downs. Trying to go for Brown. He was open, just couldn't quite connect. So Mariner doesn't quite uh, capitalize on the turnover. Now they turn the ball over on downs. It's Glacier Peak dodging a bullet there, and now the offense will come back one more time. It's kind of the middle of the season here, Tim Boyle. They've gotten through. They've got well, the and they've Lake gotten Stevens. through their tough games. At least the toughest part of the schedule. Yeah. So Aiden Ziomis and the offense, Glacier Peak from their own 32. It goes out pass, and it's Evan Manis catching it, and they'll mark him for a three, three and a half yard gain. I'm just getting an update that uh, Syracuse is still 24-27 with three minutes left in the game. Boy, Clemson. That you Clemson fans out there are going to be in a little bit of trouble right now. That will be one of the biggest that's upsets of the a, year. That's going to shake up the whole college football playoff. It will. Second and eight. Trips left here for Ziomis. He had Briggs in the back. Now he unleashes, going oh, for no. Castro, and it's picked it off. And Castro just fell down, and that's Roman Savchik. Yeah, and it looked like with the Cast interception. It looked like Castro slipped there and went right into uh, what was it, number ten's hands? Yeah, there. Savchik. He looked like he sailed it. I don't know that he sailed it. He threw the pass. He had Castro. Yeah, it's hard to say where he would have ended up. Now here, your minute left, minute forty in the thir first quarter, and there's already three turnovers in the ball game, plus a turnover on downs. My so. goodness. Just going back and forth there. They're going to wear out between the 40 and the 30. Boy, now uh, now Mariners got great field position on the 34-yard line. And they had GP. it before. Yeah, they were on the GP 37. This is right about where they were. Yeah. yeah. First and 10 for the Marauders. Fama hands it off to Harrison. Harrison, He's gone. 220 pounds. Chug it like a boom. Touchdown, Mariner. And that's exactly what happened when... Glacier Peak got the turnover the first play. They got a big, big play, and then now Mariner does the same thing to them. 34-yard touchdown Four run. Four number 34, right? Four number 34. <laughs> My goodness, have we had some action. It's going to be a little more high scoring than we might have thought. That's true. Your, your prediction is looking the best right now. At the moment. Pamadu Faal is the kicker, the 6-1 sophomore. These are, now, this extra point could be huge. That's the way big. That these teams have played each other over the years with Mark Stewart's teams, and games have always been tight. Quarterback Fama, the holder. High snap. It's down, it's up, and there's a flag, and it's no it's good. It's no good, so it'll be interesting to see what that flag is. And again, those extra points could be huge, and what happens is then you end up chasing them the rest of the night. And we, we've, we seen that, about we've seen that. We've seen that before. And it, and, you know, we talk about it. So I think it's a bad move to chase the extra points, but teams do it. And but well, Mark that Stewart epic. knows a lot more than I do. Well, so. yeah, but that epic. Well, he knows a lot about his kicker <laughs> and his holder and everything. But that epic uh, Jackson game. 
Yeah, that was that still, was that was that was sick, yo. I was. Uh, I'd love to get <laughs> get a little interview with their coach on that. Yes, inquiring minds want to know. Went for two. Now there's a lot, a lot of, of discussion. Let's go down to Ron Henthorne and yeah. see if. Well, he's way far on the other side of the field. I don't know if he knows what's going on. I don't. You know, Tim Boyle is kind of like a psycho guy. He starts talking about extra points and they miss them. Yeah, you're gonna have to walk closer to the booth, Ron. Yeah. You're breaking up, buddy. Or, or yeah, we couldn't. Towards. You were kind of breaking up. Would you say, Ron? Something about I'm being. A, I was a psycho. <laughs> a psychic, not a psycho. Oh, you're, you're a psychic. <laughs> so points, and the next thing you know, they. What happens? I think they're gonna get another shot at it. It does oh, look they're... like they are going to get another try. From the 10 yard line, Fama to hold. Pamadu Faal for the extra point. It's up and it's either wow. blocked or low. It's hard to tell. Two times in a row. I, look, I don't know, it didn't even get, looks like it might, they might have got a piece of it. I don't know. Let's well, see here. Oh, it looked like it just, it looked like it just skimmed. It was like a worm burner. One of my golf shots. Yeah, that looked like a uh, five iron for me. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll see what GP can do right after this. Back here, Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle, Ron, the Wedge, Henthorn, and Mariner mix, missed the extra point twice, and so they're down 6-7 to Glacier Peak, and Mariner now kicking off as we are kind of following along this unbelievable all, upset in college football. For all the people that are watching us and not watching ESPN, which is a smart move, uh, Syracuse might, down to minute 37, they're winning 27-24. And Caleb Briggs breaks it back up on the far side, passes the 35, might mark him at the 36. Yeah, nice little run by Briggs. That's great field, because you'll take that all day long. Harrison, the tackler. So Glacier Peak, they have struck quickly when they've scored both sides, a 34 yard run for the Marauders and the Grizzlies, a 46-yard touchdown pass. Looks like uh, it looks like Syracuse might be able to run the clock out and upset number two Clemson. That here. is just unbelievable. It's it's Friday about, the 13th. That's a good point. Aiden Ziomis rolling. Now he's going to tuck it. Nowhere to go. He's pursued and gobbled up near the. Line of scrimmage by big number 55, Daniel Abraham. Yeah, and uh, outside of that one play to Bo Burns, Glacier Peak's offense hasn't rolled at all yet. They just got to get back, get some rhythm going. That's true. They had a three and out. And then their couple. last play, they had one play, then an interception. They've had two turnovers. Second and ten. Ziomas back to pass one more time as... Time, tipped up, intercepted again! Oh my, off the hands of Castro into CJ, Kasil Najau. Like I said, their offense is not rolling at all. So you're in the first quarter here, Scott, and you got three, three turnovers already by the GP offense. So they're gonna have to get something rolling. My goodness, baby Z. has a, a great affinity of protecting the ball. Not many interceptions on uh, the stats that they list. He had four plus maybe one at the Whatever Mount Vernon. At, or not Mount Vernon, uh, it was uh, Monroe. Monroe, thank you. But that's, is that three interceptions? That's two tonight. Two? Well, there's three turnovers, right? Yes. What was the third one? The, uh, they had the fumble the on fumble. the kick. Yeah. Nonetheless, the Marauders, again, great field position. This is big number 12, Pesterkoff. Doesn't get much. Nice uh, defense stayed home there, tried to turn the corner. 
So they, the last three times, the Mariner Marauders have started at the GP37, the GP34, and now the GP34 once again. You like, you like your odds when you got that field position. Yeah, and right, right now I think Glacier Peak's lucky that it's only that they're actually winning this game 7-6. It's kind of a miracle that they're ahead in this ball game. As the clock, we'll see if they, I don't know if they're going to get this play off here in the first quarter. Negative. And, and that'll do it for the first quarter. We'll be back with the second. We'll see if Mariner can capitalize again on the interception. Did you know that Speedway Chevrolet is part of the Lee Johnson Auto family? That means 84 years of serving you the LJ way. Need a truck? We have the perfect truck to fit your needs. Half tons, one ton, two wheel drives, and four wheel drives. Our finance specialists are here to help you, whether you have good credit or bad credit. We're just off Highway 522 at West Main Street in Monroe. Lee Johnson Auto Family, the LJ Way. When you shop at Ace Hardware and Lake Stevens, you not only find what you need, we make sure you get the help you need too. Hi, this is Gray Eaglestead, and I own Lake Stevens Ace Hardware with my wife, Christine. We'll greet you at the door and answer any questions you have about what you need. We're all about serving our customers and our community. We support local high school sports and many other Lake Stevens organizations and events throughout the year. So the next time you need something for that job around the house and a little friendly advice, come see us. Ace Hardware and Lake Stevens, we are the helpful hardware folks. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware. Close. Back here live from Veterans Memorial Stadium on STSPN Friday Night Lights, Lake Stevens Ace Hardware presentation here. Scott Oshman, Tim Bull. This has had a first qu uh, quarter here of all kinds of stuff. We've had three turnovers. It's been a two wild one. Five turnovers. Five, total, yeah. Right? Two on, two on uh, Mariner. That's correct. And uh, it is a final. Syracuse upsets Clemson. And no. that's going to shake up the college football race. Fama gets it over, and Pettis, he wants a pass he, interference, and I think he might have a good case. It was Take close. another look. I'm just going to call that a bang-bang play. <laughs> too close to call. Be third and eight, just the start of the second quarter. Seen a few throws here. Not traditionally a big throwing team is the Marauders and Mark Stewart. Is Rob calling you? Negative. Somebody from New Mexico. Oh, well, you should have picked up. Put him on the air. <laughs> it is a party in Syracuse, New York. They have upset number two Clemson. Meanwhile here, Fama fakes it, keeps oh. it, and he goes down again by Erling. That was, uh, that was a third down play. Erling's, he's petitioning for a T-shirt. He really is. That'll put him at fourth and eight. At the 38-yard line of Glacier Peak. We'll see Still what Mark shocked Stewart. at that. Look at that on the ESPN. Boy, there's thousands of people on the Syracuse field there. The Crazy. Yeah, the Carrier, the carrier Dome. Dome. It's like a, the 1990s uh, basketball type team, Carrier Dome atmosphere. I wonder what the spread was on that game. That is because I don't think anybody gave Syracuse no, a chance to win not, that not game. A, no way. That so, is huge for the college football race. It is massive. Yeah. Back to punt. Here is Skrebeck. And this time the GP players wisely said, get out of, there out of the way. There were still actually a few of them down there, surprisingly. A nice punt there. Yeah, that's got a good special teams play. That's going to be down at the eight-yard line maybe, nine-yard line. So it's wow. going to be. Uh, Is that where they're going to put it? Yeah, it looks like it. He's standing at about the nine. Now GP is going to have to find a way to keep that football. It's very important. That's why yeah. they named the game after it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you've used up your quota now for the year with that I, one. I know. That's only the first time I've used it. That's but it's true. very important. It is. Back and forth. Grizzlies up 7 6. Aiden Ziomas already two INTs. Now, to be fair, he was going to Castro both times. One time Castro just slipped. The second one went off his hands. They handed it off to Collins up the middle, and he'll get a few. 
couple yards right up the middle. Not a Glacier Peak doesn't run that play much. They, they haven't really been able to establish a solid running game this year. No, we talked Most, to head coach Mark uh, uh, Nick Bender. He's, that was one of the things he wanted to do that tonight is yeah, get a running game Their going. leading rusher is Aiden Ziomas with, like, you know, 350 yards. He's by far their leading rusher. Fake it to Collins Speaking this time. Ziomas, and he's got a lead blocker, but he gets four or five maybe up to the no, he got 25. Oh, that's yards. right. He got 15. You're yeah. right. That's I a should big first down and got, gets them out of that red zone. The red zone they don't want to be in. That was a big pickup. You're right. I need different binoculars, Tim. Big first down. They started this drive at the nine-yard line. Ziomas looking, tries to get. He finally does, or no? It's knocked oh, it down. Like it. Hit him at, did, did it just bounce off him? No, that was. it looked like it was hit by the Mariner number six, Savchik. And, boy, the typical solid Ziomas to Castro. There's another look at it. It's kind of a funny play. Meanwhile, second and ten. Collins to the left. Baby Z fakes it. Now he gets it over to Collins and well read by the Marauders. Yeah. Nowhere to go there. The draw was not sold. Nobody buys it. They don't run that play very often either. Nick Bender. I like the quarterback draw though. They yeah. Just do that a little more often, but came up empty there. Third and 10 from their own 25. Oh, no. Look at the smoke at Berkeley, California there. They you almost didn't play that game tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was talking to some friends in the Bay Area today. Ziomas, third and 10 at 25. Going. Oh, Manus! Look at that, the magnet! 40. Dragging oh. Marauders down to the 25 yard line. A huge pickup for Glacier Peak. And not only did he have a great catch, he drug a couple players about 10 yards for those extra yards. You'll see it right here. Two guys on him, and about 10 yards he gets after that. Big play for the sleeper pick. Connor Strupp, just an innocent bystander there watching. What a huge play there by GP. Finally, in Marauder territory, they get it to Collins, and Nothing doing there. He runs right into Mannyweather. Well, Glacier Peak's trying to set that run game up. I like it. It's the right thing to do. Just not having any luck with it. They really have the most luck when Baby Z's running that ball. Again, Maake Fafita, who's been out for three games or so, he's back in at that left side, and they cannot get anything going. Anthony Collins is wrapped up immediately. It almost looked like that was a uh, like misread there. Blake Gorham, number 53 for Mariner. Now you're sitting on third and 13. And MacArthur there also for... They're in four down territory, so realistically Glacier Peak wants to get about six or seven yards here and have either a nice field goal or a manageable fourth down play. Ziomas, now he's going to get pressure. Oh. Slips a tackle, gets up, nice crack oh, there. Jumps on him after he's down, but it was actually a good move by Ziomas to just get a couple out of that, or back to the line of scrimmage anyway. So now you're looking at fourth and 11, or fourth and 11 from what the... 27 yard line what are they going to do here so you got well, what a 40 are they 44 get, yard field goal wow here. they do have corwin in yeah 44 yarder if no not, gimme for any high school no Braden corwin if you're not familiar last year as a freshman on jv kicked a 50 plus field goal i wonder how you never see a 50 yard field goal in a jv game that's just unheard of 44-yard right, field goal attempt. 
Evan Christie, one of our player of the game, on the hold. The kick Ooh. is up. It's low. How it is that? good. Oh, no. And no good. He had the distance. Did it go a little wide right at the end? Let's go down to Ron Henthorne. Yeah. Did you get a good view for that, Ron? Yeah, I had a pretty good view of that. It was a nice low line kick. Plenty of distance, but about five yards right of the pole, actually. Oh, so Five yards right? Five okay. yards, huh? Yeah. From our vantage point, yeah, it's hard to tell if it, it, it what the like angle is. It looked like he obviously had the distance. It was a very low, low kick. But you can see he, he, he can get it. He's got a boot. But, yeah, it had plenty of distance. Boy, that brought back some memories, a 44-yard try. Yeah, I remember when the weapon was yeah, here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We'd be in the 50-plus yard range, no problem. For all of you that want to pick up Spencer Pettit on your fantasy when he gets to the NFL, Tim Boyle has first right of refusal on that. That's right. He called that one early. He'll be on my team. <laughs> Take him in the first round. Probably should. We can talk about that. So Mariner oh. picks it back up here. Mello, the ball at the 20. Nice job by the D line there. Not giving an inch there. He gets right back to about the line of scrimmage. If they do a good, you know, it's kind of hard. I can see why Glacier Peak's struggling a little bit. It's kind of hard with this misdirection stuff. And they got a lot of options people they're handing off to. And well, and they were playing Bellevue three times a year. They got used to it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> three times. It did seem like three times a year. <laughs> One time it did seem like every year. And then Who are we playing this week? Oh, that's right, Bellevue. Yeah, they get them in the playoffs and in the regular season. Second and ten. Ronnie, you got something down there? And they get a right to Harrison. The big fella. Not much doing no. there. It's going to bring up uh, what, about a seven, seven yards. Should be, yeah, third, third and seven to go. There you see, 542 left in the first half. It's Glacier Peak homecoming tonight. We'll have all those festivities for you at halftime. We're already down to five minutes and 30 seconds left, and this game's flying it by. It really is, and we've got uh, in the booth, of course, Tim's Cougs taking on the Cal Bears. Justin Wilcox, the first-year head coach. Well, uh -oh. Look at that. Uh -oh. Fama goes deep, and I don't think he even knew he threw it. I don't. It's a little overthrown. He's getting a little... Uh... Getting some extracurricular on number three there. Trying to go. Oh, way, over, way over his head. Trying to go to CJ there. and Fourth and seven. They're going to have to punt from there, obviously. So the first quarter we had bam, bam, big plays, touchdowns. We're thinking our predictions are way off. It could be high scoring. Now we're settling into it the could have 20s been, It could have been high scoring. There's just too many turnovers. Yeah. Bo Burns back to receive. Well, he's not back very far. No, he he's isn't. He's not giving him a lot of. Skrebeck. And he calls for a fair catch. Good move there. It's at good field the 47, position. Yeah. 47 yard line. Tough night for Tim to be here. He's looking for his I think alma mater, the Cougs. Might the have just Cougs. scored on the first play, but I Looks see Looks like flag. they did. You knew the flag was coming before it is. I know. Even when you're watching I TV. Can, I can sense it. I've I just watched, felt a little pain in my side. Yeah, I watch football with you. It's it's bizarre. You have alien-type flag <laughs> prognostication <laughs> skills. I've never seen anything like it. Well, like I, my dad was a referee, so he was I, always that's picking true. out the flags when I was watching games. 5.09 left. GP, one more crack here. Fakes it to Briggs. Now it's all well, Aiden Ziomis. Look at that. Aiden with plenty of green. Finally pushed out of bounds by CJ, but he gets all the way down into deeper Mariner territory. Let's see where they put him at the, the 30. At the, oh, he's smart standing at the 30. Okay. Thought he got a little farther than that. So once again, Baby Z able to eat up some yards. And again, that's Baby Z by far their best most effective rusher this year by a ton by not it's not even close first and 10 now on the mariner 30 yard line now they get it to briggs briggs makes a move and he just lowers his pads 
with CJ, That's and he'll good. pick up a couple. Actually, more than a couple. Four, maybe yeah. On that. Kind of pulled the. They pulled Graves there. There's big 69 anchor Graves. Big shout out to that offensive line. We don't give them enough love. They yeah, don't get the pub. They yeah, and that's kind of the way it is being on the offensive line. They need never get the credit. I know they needed a new PR agents. <laughs> big 69 anchor Graves, the senior captain. That Cougar touchdown taken away, so they'll still have the ball, though. Second and six here. Zeoma's back to pass. Thinks about it. Now he goes up, looking. Uh, stiff arms. Oh, a little bit. And yeah, he's going to get the late hit out of bounds. Saw that one coming. So Zerba, that's, uh, you'll see this again. Watch. He gives him a little stiff arm. That's Abraham, 18, the Mariner right and there. And then he's going to give him way, get, hit him way too late out of bounds, and then he gives him a shove right there. right there. there. He's about four or five yards out of bounds there. I hate to compliment our unbelievable five-tool player. That's a great sideline shot right there. That was great. That was awesome. Nice pickup. I think the Cougs just turned the ball over. Falk? Yeah, it's picked. Oh, my. One of the most underrated college football quarterbacks we've seen in a long time. Well, he's actually was he's, in the Heisman race well, right now. Well, yeah, now. But there. early yeah. in the season he was. Yeah, right? he wasn't even a mention. Come on. You were no, I, I know, crying, I whining. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> You're stating the facts. First and ten. With the penalty here from the 15. Zeomis looks left. Now he gets oh, to the Manis. The slant, that. 10, 5. Evan, the magnet Manis. And he finds the end zone. Touchdown, we Laser got there, baby. We talked about how he'd get himself warmed up. There's a flag, according uh -oh. to Ronnie. Uh-oh. It could be coming back. All the Mariner guys are pointing the other way. So Jim Carter, our head referee. That's a natural reaction, though. Ineligible. Ineligible downfield. Oh, that's a killer. That's a signature. Take, oh, and it wouldn't even have, probably wouldn't affect the play at all. By the way, we should mention that uh, Ross Bowers is, co is the quarterback for Cal tonight. And we saw him a few times with Bothell. He did. There's Boy, and he lit the field up. He did. You're looking at head coach Nick Bender there. Oh, wait, they're, they're – now Bender, they're they're discussing this. This may this may end up being a touchdown for Glacier Peak. I think after further review, here we go. We're gonna try we got the our, ref mic our ref here. mic. See if he, we hear it. He's Jim Carter. Nope. He's picking up. He's the picking flag. the flag up. Wow! Touchdown! So the magnet wow. touchdown stands. Fifteen yard. Touchdown by Evan Manis. And what set that up was that big late hit out of bounds. Those penalties can just kill you sometimes. Glacier Peak. Back and forth, turning the ball over. 3.56 left in this first half. Corwin with Evan Christie, the holder. For the extra point. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 14-6, Glacier Peak, three, already down to 3.56 left in the half. The game is flying by. Really is. When you got those running teams, that clock just gets chewed up so fast. We'll take a break and let Tim watch the Coug game here for just a <laughs> second. We'll be back with more on SDSVN. We are all frustrated with the high cost of heating and cooling our homes. At GNS, we are completely changing the way you keep your home comfortable. Our Mitsubishi ductless heat pumps allow you to control the temperature in each room separately all of which can be controlled from your smartphone or tablet. Because we are the mini split experts here in Washington, we can design a perfect system for you, one that will save you a lot of money on your utility bill. Call GNS Heating, Cooling and Electrical today or visit us at gsheating.com. Back here, Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle, Ron the Wedge, Henthorne, we have the five-tool player, 
Todd Elvig with us. Good evening, everybody. It's a fall football night here. Homecoming night, Friday the 13th, chill in the air. It definitely feels like Friday night football. Glacier Peak, 14-6 lead right now with 3.56 left to go in this first half. This is a big game playing for a playoff spot. Yeah. Kind of both teams in the middle of the pack right now. If you're Glacier Peak, you're, you're loving life that you're up 14-6 right now with three turnovers in the first quarter and you're still up 14-6. That's uh, a little bit lucky. Had a short delay because the homecoming squad over here with the cars had their lights on. The referee wouldn't let them start until he turned them off. <laughs> People in the parking lot had their lights on? Now that one I haven't heard before. No, so that's interesting. On the track. On the track, okay. Corwin kicks it off. And it's taken oh, there. Oh, it's fumbled. And they just have to drop it right there at the 12, 13 yard line. Good play to jump on the ball, but the problem with that is now they're some bad field position at the 13 yard line. I tell you, I just am amazed each year, each game by the insights that Ron the Wedge Henthorne comes to us with. That was huge. It was. Nobody does lights that. Lights on. The truck had the lights on. I haven't heard yeah. that one before. They're lining up for the homecoming festivities here at halftime. Uh-oh, uh -oh, here we go. players coming on, look out. The head, uh, here we go. I just wanted to make a comment about those lights. That's gotta be Lou Bunt down there. Absolutely. You, you know. The leader, <laughs> the leader of the A West Coast. You love that guy. I love Lou is Bunt. Is it Lou Bye Bye Bunt? <laughs> it, it is, is Lou Bye Bye. And, and when he gets probably in the truck, watching right now too. He might be able to outrun his son when he's in the truck. Maybe. But it'd be close. <laughs> Is that like uh, Ben Johnson racing the horse type yes. of thing? Harrison with the carry for the Mariner. Big number 75, Palmalfe on the tackle. Taking up the, he is. He's taking a, up some room there. He, uh, Him and Anchor Graves are right next to each other. That's, that's a lot a, of real that estate. That is a lot of real. That's a lot of blue. <laughs> that is. <laughs> That's a city block right there. You don't have to Zillow that. I can tell you what it's worth. <laughs> Second and six. Oh, Still he, going. Oh, oh man. my. No, and he goes through about four tacklers on that play. Pesterkoff just kept the wheels burning. Look at that. With a name like Pesterkoff, you got to be, be able to run people over. Uh, absolutely, no doubt. A first down for the Marauders. 3.01 left here in the second half. Now, typically, this is where if Mariner has a time issue and they need to throw the ball, that's I could run into some issues. I think they feel like with issues. three minutes in their timeouts, they have no problem with the time. Bama, there. this time, just as I say it, it's complete to oh, CJ, and he's that. still they going. Finally boy. wrestled out. I'll tell you what, tonight they're having a hard time tackling. Finally taken out by Drew Johnson, who's back tonight. Yeah, he's been injured for a couple games, right? That was a big pickup there for another Mariner first down. Imak, if he, uh, you should listen to the program. It's catching on. <laughs> yes, he's out there, I said Todd. that before, Todd. <laughs> Come on, Todd. <laughs> I mean, it's our sixth, seventh year. Thousands of people listen to us every night. I don't know why, but they do. 244, first and 10 here for Mariner. Number 14, Fama, but he gets it to Mello, just Number the Wildcat. There, good job Number three. There. there again is big Drew Johnson with the tackle. Johnson, number 37, right? It's That's a, correct. Yeah, he was making a name for himself out. He's got some making up to do. Tim's got to be happy. They, the Cougs turn the ball over in their own zone, and they end up just giving up a field goal, 3 nothing, Cal. Second and seven here. They go to the other one oh. time. It's knocked down. Who Incomplete. Was that? Number three. And that's John Paul Anderson, John Paul. JP. JP. He swatted that like it was a basketball. He's trying to go to Romello as 
head coach Mark Stewart, like, I was asking him the pronunciations. You were there, the names. He's like, I just call him Mellow. Yeah, and <laughs> CJ or... CJ, yeah. Hey, you're nobody till we butchered your name up here in the booth. It's a badge of honor. Third down and seven. 14-6, Glacier Peak on top. Fama, number 14, the quarterback. He gets it and he hands it right up. Oh. No, he keeps it on the right side. Oh, I don't think he He's got it. It's going to be really close. He turned the corner. We might, if he, he should have pulled the Russell Wilson. Or well, the, it looks like he tried, but they looked like he out of bounds there at the 49. Oh, man, they marked him way back. Way back. I thought he got a little farther than that. Hearing there's some laundry. It looks like it's going against uh, Mariner. Might decline it and get it back to fourth down, keep it at fourth down. Jim Carter. Jimmy Carter's facing like he's gonna mark <laughs> off against Glacier Peak though. A lot of conversation, and we haven't had that many penalties, but they have been. Uh, In high school, they definitely like to talk about yes, it. Yes, they do. Looks like they're going to mark it off against Mariner. We'll get the call here. Ron, does Ron know what that is? Uh, doesn't know yet. <laughs> Todd Elvig saying he thought he saw him do well, false, false start. Well, false start would be a dead ball, and they wouldn't. Oh, you know, that, that's how they're, yeah, they're there saying you go. false start. Look at that. One for Todd Elvig. One out of 18. He gets that. He doesn't listen to us up here, but he's got that Why one. Why don't you down. throw him some Cheetos? He deserves it. <laughs> He's got to get a couple more right. That was a good one. Cheetos. Normally, they don't even let you run the play on a false start, though, because it's a dead ball. So I'm surprised they ran the play and everything. But it looks like GP declined. Uh, it's fourth and four, and now there's going to be a timeout. But a false start, Mariner. you can't decline. It's a dead ball. So that I'm, it's a I'm, dead ball. Automatic, I, don't know. I go to I the don't place know. I'm more comfortable, confused. We're going to go to a timeout. We'll discuss it right after this. A couple big runs. Now at the Mar Mariner 34. Back to pass one more time. Fakes it. Now he unleashes, trying to go. Overthrown there. To 23, Connor Strupp. Or Stroop, depending on where you're from. Had him open, just a little bit overthrown. It's depending on where you're from. <laughs> Depending I mean, on do what I have kind of to laugh? At, do I have to laugh at all my jokes? <laughs> well, somebody, somebody has to, right? Uh oh, Tim, That's what is was, going on? I was busy laughing at your stale <laughs> joke. That's what happened. Ron, what happened? You seem to be the flag swami tonight. Uh, holding GP. I think you'll see a call here in just a minute. A minute thirty-six left to go. Boy, this game was flying until about two minutes ago yeah not running much time off the clock boy that brings it 10 yards from the spot of the foul wow. that's the that's that high school <laughs> thing and what? in the pros you know it's a 10 yard penalty and if it's third and 10 it's third and 20 but yeah for the have, line of scrimmage yeah but here now it's first and 24 do you think that's something they should discuss yeah, yeah first and I 24 do. i don't think it's stupid 
I don't know what the reasoning is. Zioma's back, he's about to get crushed. She finally eludes him, gets under and just falls forward to the 45. And he saved himself some wounds there. He was about to get cracked. And another flag, which is probably a hold against GP again. Look at Ron down there. Let's get holding offense. Ooh. That's going to be painful. There's Jim he Carter. Was way, he was way back there, too, so this could be... This could be like first and 40. <laughs> Wait, where you asked me earlier, what's the <laughs> longest third down play you'd ever seen? Converted. Yeah. Converted. It could be tonight, right? <laughs> third and 43, Miami against Notre Dame in like 88. What? Or 80, 88, I think. Hit us up on the Twitter if you know exactly. The day. Hey, there was a. In college last week or the week before, it was third and 87 for a team. Are you kidding yes. me? Yes. No, no joke. Third and 87. They didn't convert, though. They didn't. <laughs> they get close. They got 86. <laughs> they had to, it, was a inst, it was a replay. My First goodness and gracious. First 37. Come on. Gets it. Finally, Castro connects oh. and... Here comes David Castro. <laughs> and F Evan Manis almost had a block in the back, and he kind of put his hands up like, no, I you really didn't it? do that. There it is. <laughs> it almost had, we almost got another one there. Ziomas <laughs> has tried to go to Castro a couple times tonight. First, first catch there for Castro. Always big shout-out to his folks. And I think his dad's right on the landing out yep, there. Yeah, always. The Boffel transfer here. Good to see Glacier Peak ends up using one of their timeouts wisely. They got three of them. We'll take a timeout as well. 121 left in the first half. Did you know that Speedway Chevrolet is part of the Lee Johnson Auto family? That means 84 years of serving you the LJ way. Need a truck? We have the perfect truck to fit your needs. Half tons, one ton, two wheel drives, and four wheel drives. Our finance specialists are here to help you, whether you have good credit or bad credit. We're just off Highway 522 at West Main Street in Monroe. Lee Johnson Auto Family, the LJ Way. The whole first quarter. Welcome back here, Friday Night Lights. You just saw Fred's Rivertown Ale House. That'll be... Uh, We're going to be down there for a podcast. We right? are. More, more information on our podcast coming. Second and 28 to go. Zioma's back to pass. Going deep. Long's out a wide, wide open. open. Strup. Oh, Stroop, Strup. Touchdown, Glacier Peak. When he was wide open and... Aiden Ziomas just hit him on a dime there. Great pass. How'd they get let him get so open in the secondary there? Especially on like, a, what was that, second and 30 or second something? Second and 28. Or, yeah, man, you'd think, plus with that time on the clock and, and with the half coming to an end, you'd think they'd be in a little bit of a prevent. Well, I think hats off to the coaches, right? Coming out of the timeout. Yeah. Just the way he drew it up. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Ron could have caught that. I, Ron, the former college wide receiver, I think he could have caught that. Christie with a hold and Corwin up, and it is good. He's three for three on PATs in Glacier Peak. Kind of slugging it out there, but all of a sudden, 21 6 GP on top. The game seems closer than the score, I'll tell you that. And we'll have to look. I'm not sure. That could be Connor's first TD. I think it might be. And what was that, about a, almost a 50-yard TD? Yeah, this the senior. Aiden Ziom is putting up some more video game numbers here. To, yeah, he is putting it back on. He To credit Monroe and Lake Stevens, I mean, he, he uh, kind of was held down a bit. Definitely at Monroe say. and Lake Stevens, you know, they had a kind of a good run at it at 14-14 and 
then just kind of fell apart after that. Mangum, Romello, Mello back to receive the six foot senior for the Marauders. Back there along with also number 16, Amory Brown. Corwin's kick, and it's gonna be Brown from the five. Hurdles, oh. it's up to the 30, still going, and finally Johnson has to take him down. Coops just turned the ball over again. My goodness. Not looking good for the Cougs. Ooh. Got it stripped right out of him. Two turnovers. We're watching. We're multitaskers. Yeah, we are two taskers. This is kind of our cap, our limit. If I had to chew gum right now, I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> That's true. 103 left to go in this first half. I remember at like the 5.30, we were like, wow, this game is just crazy. I know, and now these last two minutes have just taken, it's still a minute left. The last two minutes have taken longer than the whole first quarter. Somebody hit the brakes. Their own 31 yard line. Fama, the quarterback, looks over here. He gets it to CJ and he can't hold on. And there's Akinaga. I think that he hit him, but I think that was just, just unintentional. He take another look. Yeah, he didn't tell whether he had the ball or not. Well, plus you got to hit him because it's one of those where uh, you don't know if it's a backwards pass or not because it's pretty close there. Not only is Ross Bowers on Cal, but Devontae Downs I was just from Mount say, Lake Terrace, who we saw several times. All kinds of. For, uh, what, three years probably in a row, I think we saw him. Local tie-ins everywhere. He's been player of the week, like two weeks in a Like two weeks this year, he's been Pac-10 defensive player of the week. Here's the handoff to Harrison. And he's Nothing bottled up. There. Tony. Ziomis, the, the mother of Baby Z, Mrs. Baby Z, wants to know if we have a Jackson score. We can only keep track of two, ga yeah, two games. Yeah, we're watching time. two games. Tony, you understand. You know us. Another and timeout. That's a timeout. We'll take we're a quick. We're still at 52 seconds left. We in are. The My half. Lord. It's like watching water boil here for a second. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be back. We'll try and check a score for you on STSPN frustrated with the high cost of heating and cooling our homes. At GNS, we are completely changing the way you keep your home comfortable. Our Mitsubishi ductless heat pumps allow you to control the temperature in each room separately, all of which can be controlled from your smartphone or tablet. Because we are the mini split experts here in Washington, we can design a perfect system for you, one that will save you a lot of money on your utility bill. Call GNS Heating, Cooling and Electrical today or visit us at gsheating.com. Back here, just the closing seconds of the first half. 21-6 Glacier Peak. Third and eight for Mariner right now with 52 seconds. They would desperately like to get some points on the board here. Fakes the handoff, now he's gonna go pass, going oh, deep. Had him open too, number 34. I think that's Harrison. It right? is, yes. Just kind of overthrew him. Quiet. Eight. I'm not sure. He kind of threw it in between there, between he had CJ and Harrison. I'm not really sure. Now, what's interesting here, Scott, is they're going to have to punt the ball back to Glacier Peak, and Glacier Peak with 47 seconds, yeah. they may choose to try to get try to go for some <laughs> points here. <laughs> Nick Bender, who's the offensive coordinator, he has some pent up points he he had at the last uh, yeah. couple of weeks. Well, you, you know, if you have the opportunity, I think you got to take it. Ethan oh. Skrabek back to punt, and Ooh. oh, that's close. That was close to being blocked. Well, GP's going to get it about the 35-yard line, so it'll be interesting to see if Nick Bender just want, chooses to go in go in with the score 21-6. You got three turnovers already, so yeah. do you risk that, or do you uh, air it out? 
One timeout left to go, and that was Anchor Graves. That was Anchor the Newsmaker. Yeah, that almost got the. That uh, almost tried to, yeah. to block that. A little strategery here as we close out the first half, getting ready for homecoming, Glacier Peaks homecoming festivities. A great fall brisk night here. From the 35, Ziomis sets up the screen. Manis can't hold on. Ooh. And that was that almost, was almost picked, picked off. That was almost picked off, and that's the answer to why you don't why you're hesitant on that. That was very close to being picked off. Boy, Raytrell McCartha for Mariner almost made one Looks heck like of a play. Thrown a little bit behind him. Second and 10, ball from 35, 31 seconds left. Only four seconds went off the clock there. Now they look over. All kinds of signals going. The band waiting to get in. Homecoming court waiting to come in. Blue Bunt trying to get ready. Zilmas rolls. Now he's going to go back the other way. Tucks it, and here comes Baby Z. What oh! a block by Manis! Oh, and, and there's a flag. a flag! That was clean. That looked like a fair that was block a from here. clean block from Evan Manis. And he just absolutely leveled the guy. And from our angle, here it is. that looked perfectly you clean. You see it. Bottom of your screen. Oh, that's clean. I, I think they're going to go, Ronnie. Like block to you, but it was a, a player who was, uh, you know, what do, you, what do you call it when you're defensive, not looking? Defenseless player? <laughs> right? Defenseless player, yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't think that's, the def that's usually on a wide receiver, though, but I don't know. That looked like a clean block. To me. It was it was hard, don't get me wrong. It was a heck of a hit, but it looked fair, and we have the privilege, thanks to the 5 tool player, of seeing the replay, and he was in pursuit of Zeomis. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I think it. I think it was such a hard block. They just threw the flag. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it looked clean. It looked clean. Even on the replay, it looks clean. Well, they put him back down now at the 25-yard line. Now, if you're Glacier Peak, you might want to just say, "Let's go into half with a 21-6 lead." Second and 20. Zioma's back to pass. Looking for Manis. He's going down the sideline. Caught oh my God. by Manis. Gets away from CJ. And he wow. finally down into the Mariner. 16-yard line. The magnet. And he just redeemed himself something huge there. Although I don't think that block was his fault. But he just came back and said, all right, give me the ball. That was a great catch. Evan the Magnet hauls that one in. Outstanding play. First and 10 now at the Mariner 20 yard line is where they're gonna mark him. And Glacier Peak wants to take their final timeout. Are we taking a timeout, Todd? We'll be back. Let's see if they can get in right after this. Did you know that Speedway Chevrolet is part of the Lee Johnson Auto family? That means 84 years of serving you the LJ way. Need a truck? We have the perfect truck to fit your needs. Half tons, one ton, two wheel drives, and four. Quick time out there. Their last one of the half. Racking up some frequent flyer miles tonight. <laughs> Aiden's going to have some Aiden. big numbers. He's, right he's going to be MVP gold in a second. Some big plays. <laughs> Don't see a Jackson score. Speaking of Baby Z here, Tony asking. I don't see we've been uh, looking through. First and 10 from the 20. He almost rolling left. Now he floats one out, going to Castro. Intercepted. Oh, I think it was picked off. Number ten for right Mariner Roman Savic. 
Yeah. And that's his third INT tonight. That's uh, fourth very turnover rare. for Glacier Peak, and he'd like to have that one back. Mariner will get it with three seconds left to go in this first half, and I'm sure the offense would like that back of Glacier Peak. But the young man, Savchik, made a heck of a play. Again, trying to go to Castro one more time. Four turnovers already in the first half. Man. And they got a 21 to six lead. How is that even, that just does not equate at all. Number 20, I think that's Holt was flying yeah. to get off the field there. So they get to snap it and deep in there. And he lets it fly, does Fama. Yep. He's trying to go to Brown and. It's gonna end the half there. You see it one more time, and we're going to try and get head coach for Glacier Peak, Nick Bender, with Hi, Ron, and there he is. With, uh, coach Nick Bender. Uh, Nick, uh, you got the lead out there, but you got four turnovers tonight. Uh, what's going on out there? It's just simple little things, you know, trying to get a little too uh, too greedy on some things. We just got to take what's there and not force it. Well, you kind of got right down to the last few minutes, and you made a big run at that uh, last play there, so it's pretty uh, pretty uh, ambitious. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, if there's time on the clock, we're going to try to score regardless of what's going on. Um, and we had open guys. We just got to take what's there. I like the aggressive play. Good luck in the second half. All right, thank you. Go, Gris. All right, boys, back up to you. Thank you, Ronnie. 21-6, our halftime score. Don't go away. The... Halftime show with all the Glacier Peak homecoming festivities, all the pageantry. We'll have it right here on STSPN.
possibly. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. It is just the ending of the halftime here. Welcome back, STSPN Friday Night Lights, presented by Lake Stevens Ace Hardware, Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle, Ron the Wedge Henthorn. So, Tim, we had a slow kind of through the mud little back and forth, a lot of turnovers the first half. Then Glacier Peak unloads 21-6. Uh, what's your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are is they've each team, according to your each team's at 20 or nine, nine possessions. Is that correct? Yeah. Eight, yes. That's that's kind of unheard of. It, it's you f they filled up. I gotta get a new piece of paper. <laughs> they filled up every line I have. Not so. It's like extra possessions innings. in the first half. That's just unbelievable. And 24 turnovers on Glacier Peak in the first half. That's kind of crazy. Aiden Ziomis, three interceptions in the first half. Which is uncharacteristic. He hasn't had a lot of interceptions the whole year, and he's got three in the first half, plus they had the one turnover on the punt. And, I mean, um, it, in fairness to him, a couple of them weren't his fault, but no, it's they, a collective It's you contributory know, negligence <laughs> is what I would call it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa <laughs> hey, that is a big word. I like it, too. Do, do you got to spell that for me? My goodness. So 21-6, this is actually a very important matchup here in the Wesco 4A. Both teams kind of in the middle of the pack. Yeah, and it, they, they need that third and fourth spot. And it's 21-6, but you wouldn't really think that by watching the game. It's, the game seems to be a little closer than the score. Surprisingly, Glacier Peaks up. It's really shocking that they're up 21-6. Now, Meadow De or a Mariner will get the ball for in the second half, so... Um, gives them a chance right off the bat. And Glacier Peak, they had a chance. They were down on the 20-yard line at the end of that first half, and that was the, the third pick there trying to go to Castro for Aiden Ziomis. Yeah, and they got picked off right about the, what was it, like the one-yard line they marked that, and for that was the fourth turnover of the game. They had all kinds of stuff. Braden Corwin tried a 44 or 46 yarder, he missed it. Looked like he had plenty of distance on it. It's wide, a little bit to the right. We just watched the Cougs hit a 52 yard field goal in their matchup, the Cal Bears. As we're underway with the second half, and it's taken right at the one yard line. This is Mello. Uh -oh. Finds a lane. Oh, look at Mello. that. Mello. Still going, now horizontal, and finally the blue shirts catch up, and they'll go down at the 44-yard line. I thought for a second he had a chance to take it all the way to the yeah, house. Yeah, it looked like the only person left to beat was uh, the kicker, and the, but then he kind of turned, turned and went east-west. But they're going to get some great field position about the 45-yard line, their Mello. own 45-yard line, but they'll take that any day of the week. Mello. Romello Mello, that's what uh, that's head coach. Romello Mello? Well, that's actually Romello. Magum is M A N G U M is his last name, but Mark Stewart just calls him Mello. So I said, well, I guess we'll just call him Mello. So we'll see what the Marauders can come up with. Number 14, the quarterback, the senior, Fama. They get it off to big number 12. Nothing doing there for hit, Josiah Pestergoff. He hit the line hard. Actually kind of bounced off the defensive line. It looked like he almost got bounced backwards a little bit and almost escaped, but uh, good play by the GPD line. Tried to find some other scores at halftime, Tim, and See if we can catch up with a little bit. Monroe taking care of business against Mount Vernon. I'd love to see that uh, uh, Oak Harbor Ferndale score. Second and 10 from the 45, and this time it's Mello again. He'll get up maybe two or three yard line. Looks yards. like it's going to bring up about a third and six. Lindsay with a Mariner, tackle for Glacier Peak. Mariner loving that run. They threw the rock, though, more they, than I was expecting. 
They did. They kind of had to a couple, you know. Then when ha what happens is you get down 21-6. Yeah. Then you start thinking, okay, I'm off of my game plan. i got to start throwing, and that could be more trouble. But they're sticking with it right now. Big third and six right here, and he looks to pass one more time. It's caught right at the first down marker, taken down yeah. by Pettis. Looks like it's oh, Brown geez, on the reception. He, it looked like forward progress had had him the first down, and I, I think that's kind of a bad spot that they gave Mariner there. Let's go down to Ron the Wedge, Henthorn on the sidelines. Ronnie, can you see from your vantage, uh, that looked like a rough spot from here. Uh, I'm on clear on the other side of the field, guys, but uh, I kind of agree with you. I thought he was over the line. Yeah, they're going to mark him, a, they're gonna mark him about a yard short, and Man, I got a tough from here. I got a pretty good. It's right straight across from me. It looked like it forward progress had him over the line. That was a polis view. Yeah, you it had. was. <laughs> if it would have been a couple yards downfield, the pole would have been right in my way. Uh, There's a challenge flag out there, man. I know. They, they need one. They should have. There's Mark Stewart's challenge. Well, fourth and one. They're going. Now for where's it. 34? And oh, and oh what a defensive it. play, Mello! Wow, and he's just stood up by the defensive line. Was that Anchor the Newsmaker? It in there? looked like Anchor the Newsmaker. We're gonna. Oh, we don't have the instant Along replay. Along with Paul Moffey and everybody, we're the, we're home the, alone here. The three-tool player <laughs> has left the building. It is literally it's, just Tim and I. The Sitting three two in the booth. players left like four times. Oh tonight. my gosh! Seriously, did he? Uh, <laughs> does he have an apartment in the city? I mean, what? Where is he? <laughs> He's Ron, down. Ron, is he down at the concession stand? Ron didn't ask us if we wanted me. I heard at halftime. Ellen and Steve Holly, by the way, want to thank them for their uh, Steve uh, doing our yeah. sideline camera, doing a great job, I'll, and Ellen as well. But Ron, we'll get to you in a second here. I got more. The concession stand apparently is out of food, what well, we heard. What's funny is they said they have cold popcorn and warm soda. Yeah, well, I Kalen mean, Briggs. On. on a homecoming night, you I, got cold popcorn and warm soda? Well, I don't even understand how that happens. Unbelievable. I mean, it's a nice it's a, crowd. Don't get a, us wrong. It's not like it's been, you know, bull rushed. Yeah, exactly. The concession stand. It's a breakdown stand. in communication. <laughs> it's there. a failure. What do we got here? Second well, second and nine. And nine the first was a handoff to Caleb Briggs, and uh, well played as usual. We're having tough for the uh, Glacier Peak. Going up the middle has been very rough. We got paramedics coming in. Yeah, the I know. Field I saw too. that. Maybe Ron can tell us what's going on there. But Man, paramedics another... coming in, into the stands for somebody. Yep. Well, I hope everyone's okay. Yeah. Don't like to see that. Zeomas was the ball carrier there, just to the right side taken down quickly by the Marauder defense and it brings up third and eight. Glacier Peak up 21-6, 8-11 here to go in the third quarter. Baby Z now rolls to the near side, chasing. Let's it go, oh. it's caught by Stroop! And Stroop who already has a touchdown down to the 15! Still going down to the 10 or the 5. Connor Stroop Strup. And that's a great play by Stroop. And boy, I'll tell you what, that was tight getting that ball in there. He kind of threaded the needle, and I wasn't sure if that was going to get picked off or what. But uh, good job by Stroop to just kind of come away. Sometimes you just got to out-muscle the guy and it was. take it, it away. And who wants it more? That was right in front of us. It was kind of a different way he caught that almost like he's taking something out of the oven exactly like a loaf of bread or something <laughs> first and ten a huge play first and goal check that right down on the goal line Briggs he'll get it oh. to Briggs Caleb gets a corner and Briggs almost down he'll be called out at the one yard line he, oh we wanted Caleb Briggs oh, and he to get a touchdown the, he turned the corner and he had some daylight but he just got caught right about the one five seven junior Big fan of the Briggs family. Okay, I'm really upset. Uh -oh. What happened? Todd Elvig back uh, in. They are out of pizza. Oh, we were just talking about We were just about saying that, they're out of everything. They're out of everything. They're Second and goal here. Briggs to the left. I told Todd was down at the concession stand. You right? called it. 
Briggs, oh. does he get oh, it? No! Aiden Ziomas, baby Z! Touchdown, Glacier the, Peak. The toddler gets into the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> what a fake. I don't know about <laughs> That was a little magic. Can we magic. still call him the baby? I mean, of hasn't course. he moved up to Absolutely. toddler no, state? No, he's status baby Z. Baby Z. <laughs> I think it's enduring to him now, see? Yeah. He starts out as a freshman. He's, he's a baby all the way through. That's right. You can't live that name down now. It's like the weapon. A great Plus fake. his mom's already got a T-shirt that says Mama's. Yeah, in. and a sign. <laughs> and it's, it's, <laughs> That's right. And we're in the era of parent approved, and it's approved. I don't oh. like this going and asking permission from the parents. <laughs> well, we love actually, the Zionists. Yes, Tony came up to us in a, uh, at a Pablaze and let us know that she liked it and it's okay, even though she was getting some flack. Here's the extra point here. And it is up and it is good. Corwin's and pretty darn accurate. Braden it's Corwin. Ju just like his brother. Money. Right down the pipe. So one yard touchdown run for Aiden Ziomis. And all of a sudden, 28 6. Let's go back to our predictions. Yeah, oh, who's looking see, good here? See here? Nobody's looking good. Not really. 34 27. Yeah, it's. And Ron. Ron's. Lose, Ron's going to lose some <laughs> fan base picking Ron Mariner. Is way off. Oh, and now we got lights and I mean, siren what is coming going on? in. That, Ron, we did don't you see like what's this. going on in the stands there? Uh oh, what's happening? Oh, Ron's there's Ron right in front of us. Here. Of course, he's right in the middle of it. The wedge. Nobody gets in there like the wedge. No, what's nobody the problem, breaks wedge? through. Can Ron? Can you hear us down there? He's he's talking. He's always oh, getting some info. He's <laughs> boy. So does is that? Uh, oh, that's uh, Mr. Blair. He's talking to. Oh, we probably oh, shouldn't give up his sources. No. Blair says just a student. Just, right, a, we're okay. just a student. All right. We're all Back right. To <laughs> That's all we can say. That's okay. We just hope everybody's all right. students don't matter as much. I don't know. Branson. Or excuse me. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Here we go. Uh -oh. Mello. We thought he had one before. One guy to beat. And that, it is the kicker. And it's Braden Corwin. Corwin. Chases him down and throws him out, out of bounds with a little extracurricular activity on top of it. And no flag, Mello, Mello wants some extra extra juice, and he's talking there. Boy, that two in a row for their their uh, kick return. He, he finds We got a flag seat. down here, too, guys. Uh oh. Oh, boy. Well, they're might all be walking the, back, too. Mello is electric. They got some great athletes there on the Marauder team, as Mark Stewart told us. Looks like this might be coming back. Yeah, I think it's coming back. Flag's up three-yard line. Jim, 99% of the time when there's a flag on the kick return, it's on the re on the returning team. Generally a, a illegal bummer. block. Okay, now he promised me at halftime he was going to turn his mic on. Oh, the, uh, our the white referees? Yep. Yeah, Jim Carter. Yeah, he's a good guy. He was down there eating a Subway sandwich there. Did he get that at the concession stand? Oh, hey, by the way, I asked him about the uh, flag. Oh, which one? Okay, the, so there's a new one? rule this year. Yeah. You remember where he's hit? Yeah, coming where. Coming out of bounds and the, they got it. Yeah. Gotta, oh, right. Okay, where Evan Manis, they right. hit. Yeah. The magnet so, was the magnet. Yeah. It was so a magnet-like block. A brand new rule this year. Um, it doesn't matter if, if you hit somebody, um, not with your hands, but you, you know, nail them like that. Um, and they don't see you, that is... Personal foul, receiving team. Oh, oh, that he oh, did turn Personal it foul on the, the receiving, receiving team. team. They didn't really elaborate, but it's going all the way back to the about the 17-yard line. Wow. But that's a huge penalty because he was way he down was at in the, the 20, red zone. Yeah. yeah, so that's like a 60-yard penalty. The flag was on the 33, so it was 15 for... 15 from the 33, okay. but that, that costs him about 60 yards in field goal field position. They just call a timeout? Apparently. Somebody did. Mariner, I think, just what, called what a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> See, you want me off of this uh, thing. Oh, I tell you. We We're glad to, to have you back. <laughs> and we'll take a commercial break right here. Yes, we will. STSBN. 
When you shop at Ace Hardware and like Stevens, you not only find what you need, we make sure you get the help you need too. Hi, this is Gray Eaglestead, and I own Lake Stevens Ace Hardware with my wife, Christine. We'll greet you at the door and answer any questions you have about what you need. We're all about serving our customers and our community. We support local high school sports and many other Lake Stevens organizations and events throughout the year. So the next time you need something for that job around the house and a little friendly advice, come see us. Ace Hardware and Lake Stevens, we are the helpful hardware folks. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware. Where Back here at Snohomish Veterans Memorial Stadium. Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle, Ron the Wedge Henthorn, and Mariners going to start this one from their own 17 yard line. Oh. And he unleashes it right as he was getting hit, trying to go to CJ. Incomplete head. Uh, so it was Heston a, Pettis on the coverage. End around. That wasn't the quarterback. Their little trickery there. And yeah, someone's this is, taken this is off un, the field yeah, in a stretcher. This is here. unnerving. Hopefully they're all right. Apparently it's a student. Yeah, right in front of the the stands and there's a late flag on the field. I was actually watching the ambulance there. Oh, another unsports. Oh That's goodness. two two of them in a row against Mariner. They're kind of falling apart here. Ron, did you see any of this unsportsmanlike conduct or Unfortunately, I didn't see it either. I was kind of looking around to see this young student being taken out of the stands over here and then oh turned around and goodness. saw the same thing you did. So we'll just have to go with uh, what the replay's got on it. Ron, is the student okay? Dead ball, you know? unsportsmanlike offense. That's our head referee, Jim Carter. We got all kinds of stuff going on here. Okay, student wait looks for the okay. whistle. And, uh, He's got a... See if he turns his mic off. There we go. What's that, Ronnie? Yeah, the student is a pressure there, but I think she's okay. Second and 20, 7.30 left to go. And oh. this is Mello one more time, and he's met Gee. right up top there by. He picks up about 12 yards yeah, down did. the seam there. Dawson Crosby. Kind of distracted here as we have a EMS truck right on the track. Homecoming night. Hopefully that young lady's okay. Looked like she was okay. Yeah. Third and ten, just under seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. Glacier Peak homecoming tonight. And here's the snap, and Fama looks back. Oh. Now he unleashes. He's got a nice ball. He's going for Harrison, and Harrison wants pass interference as he's trying to come back. That ball was way underthrown. They probably, you know, if the ball was right on target, they probably could have thrown a flag, but it was way underthrown. And That'll bring up fourth really down. Defender really didn't do much to warrant a flag there. Yeah, but you're right. That's going to bring up fourth and ten, so they're going to be punting from fairly deep in their own territory. <laughs> Yeah, I got an update for you guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. I to the uh, head, head man at General, uh, GP, and he says that the young lady just fainted. And she's just fine. Her parents are going to come in and take care of her. Okay, good to hear. That's awesome. Thank you, Ronnie. Scrabbeck up to punt there. Kind of and, a short kick, and it hit. And Pettis there gets away from it. Heston. Boy, and Glacier Peak's going to start at the deep. It's going to be four, at the 41-yard line yep. of Mariner, so that's great field position to start. Glacier Peak's going to try to close the door here up 28-6. They score here, and it's going to be a little out of hand. Yeah. By watching the game, you wouldn't think it's 28-6, though. No. Glacier Peak's had some struggles. There's that. Steve Hawley, sideline camera. I want to thank him. Great shots down from the field. So Ziomis. Two backs. He gets it off to Briggs. Caleb trying to 
pick a lane there. Oh, the right, he gets up. Flag. flag. I think that might be a hold. Gain a nine. From where that's thrown. I think that's coming back. It's actually a good little run by Briggs. Got around the corner there, but uh, he might have had help from a hold. There it is, holding Glacier Peak. That's not their first one tonight. No. We've had a couple. Meanwhile, the Cougs playing down at Cal. They're trying to figure things out. Cal They're up struggling. 10 3 so far. Bowers not doing a ton. But uh, yeah, Cougs have three turnovers already in the first half. The head referee holding offense. High school, they generally don't yell out the numbers. Holding offense. It's gonna be first and 19. 19. Geomis two running backs. Does he get it? Yes, he gets to Caleb Briggs and Geomis out leading and he's popped and Goes flips in, over. Ends up going end over end. <laughs> that was Tyrell Waverly on the tackle. Great on-field camera right there. You see it right, Caleb Briggs coming right at you. Kind of got his legs taken out from him. Second, he picked, did definitely picked up a couple there. They, yeah. They're still saying second, oh, second and 14 is what they're saying now. Bo Burns, the near side receiver. He has been quiet since that opening touchdown. As you see there, Zeomis going back. Now oh, there's a flag on the play though. Peels out to the right. He connects with Manis. Manis sheds a tackler still on his feet. Evan the magnet. I think down that's to the 29. Gonna, that's a great play by Evan, but I think it's coming back. I think it's going to be some type of illegal motion on Glacier Peak. Actually, there's two flags on the play. That may benefit Glacier Peak. Offsetting. That's what that's what they would have to hope for. I think the first one's for sure on them. The sideline judge flag the offsides and the uh, oh. head, head referee is probably for motion. So let's see what happens. I think they're both against CP. Well, the offsides would have to be against um, Mariner. That's definitely coming back. Kids just trying Legal to... Legal shift, oh, offense, down. repeat second down. Yeah, both those guys in the backfield were moving around before, right, right about when the snap was going to take place. Well, there you go. Second and 19. Now the empty set is the Omis. They only rushed three, so he's got time. Now he moves his feet. Still thinking about it. Tucks it. Now he's going to run. And he gets out of oh. bounds around the 39. Almost a, almost a late hit out of bounds. He picks up some great yardage. You can when see he it improvises, right there. he seems to be at his best when he improvises and he's kind of going off script a little, you know. It's just like we talk about Russell Wilson. Yeah, exactly. Not, you know, he's best when he's just playing in the backyard just, and making stuff up. Just and let him play some street ball, and it's where he seems to be the most dangerous. And it's a little, it's harder on the defense too. They don't know if the pass is coming or if he's going to be running. Manageable third and yes. eight now, though, from first and nineteen. They started at the Marauder 41. Here's Zeomis. Flips it out, and it's caught by Castro, but not enough for a first down, not even close. Leave him at fourth and four, or five, maybe. See what they, this is four down territory, typically for Glacier Peak. Gonna call it fourth and six. Sixth. Now he's got Anthony Collins to the left of Aiden Ziomas. He scoots back a little bit. Oh, and he's, he's going to punt. punt it. Interesting. It's going to go. It takes a bounce oh, into the end zone. Yeah, it 
that's going to come. Yeah, I think I would have liked to see him gone for that. Fourth and six, a rare punt on from that, that side of yeah, the field. Yeah, from that position, typically. Well, still 419 left to go in the third quarter, so 28-6. A lot of time. Big shout out to Steve, Steve Willits, the mayor. Something. Down in California, want big well wishes. Oh, I said they're listening to KRKO and they had a 23 minute delay oh, with my an aid goodness. car on the field as well. Yeah, there's EMS trucks, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Meanwhile, down here, ball carrier keeps going. That's Big 12, Josiah Pesterkoff. It's funny, they haven't listed 5'8", but 215. 5'8", 215, that's it's hard he to looks, stop. Looks taller, just a sophomore, just a sophomore. That's scary. We're going to see him for a couple more years. Yeah, and head coach for Mariner, Mark Stewart, talking about it. he's got several sophomores that he is very yeah. enthusiastic and about. The future is bright for Mariner. Second and seven, ball in their own 23. Here's Big Harrison. And it takes all kinds of blue jerseys to try, and they still don't get him down to the ground, but the whistle blows. Didn't get much on that. The nice thing that Gla where Glacier Peak has the advantage tonight is if their defense has a strong suit, it's really their D-line against the run, I think. And, yes. You know, if they had a weakness, it might be the secondary. Um, but Mariner's strength is obviously trying to run the ball and plays right into Glacier Peak's strength. Well, oh, Paul Malfi up there. Go ahead, Ronnie. For 71 here, looks like a bad ankle. Uh, a kink in the wheel there. He fell down the field. He's going to call me a timeout here. All righty. Well, maybe we'll step aside while they attend to him. It's number big, number 71, Alex Tran, the offensive lineman down there. We'll be back with more right after this. When you shop at Ace Hardware and Lake Stevens, you not only find what you need, we make sure you get the help you need too. Hi, this is Gray Eaglestead, and I own Lake Stevens Ace Hardware with my wife, Christine. We'll greet you at the door and answer any questions you have about what you need. We're all about serving our customers and our community. We support local high school sports and many other Lake Stevens organizations and events throughout the year. So the next time you need something for that job around the house and a little friendly advice, come see us. Ace Hardware and Lake Stevens, we are the helpful hardware folks. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware. Where Back here, Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle, Ron the Wedge Henthorn. Getting word again from Steve Willits. Uh, he's listening to KRKO. Now, Steve's down in, in California, but he's listening to the Everett game. Uh, Marysville Pilchuck Everett, I believe. And the young man uh, with the EMT truck coming down. They had a long delay in that game, so I hope they're okay. Yeah, both games have had. EMT trucks on the well, field. Well, now this one, oh, it's this just one, about to start drive away. You can't see it on your screen, but third and six for Mariner. Screen pass over there, nothing doing. It's going to bring up fourth down, a big pursuit, Heston Pettis. Yeah, there were just too many GP players in the vicinity there, so that's going to bring up a fourth and fourth and four. But now you're now at the point at 240. You're gonna have to start thinking about I gotta go for these because there's 28 six. You're running out of time. Yep. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see him go for it here, even though they're only on the 20. Are they on the the 26 yard line? Uh, they brought in the kicking football. Yeah, they brought in the punter. So they're at the the 26 yard well, that line. That says 36. Yeah, that's the on scoreboard's the not the scoreboard is not not good. Ooh, short kick. Back. Oh, yeah, and he's going to run it. Crosby. That's on, Crosby. Yeah. He's going to get it right at the mid stripe. So great field position for Glacier Peak. Two oh two left to go in this third quarter, and here comes the Grizzlies back out one more time. Number fifty four, Titus Walters. There, the offensive line, Colin Weens. 
The big boys up front making it happen. Anchor Graves, of course. First and 10 now at the 50 yard line. And oh, Ziomis the, is off. Oh, he might be gone. He has some oh. room. Out Boy, of bounds around read, the 25. Read option there. Keeping, and he was keeping that ball all the way. Another big run. He is tearing up the yardage here for Aiden Ziomis, the leading rusher on Glacier Peak's team. By a landslide. Not even close. Big pick up there. First and 10 now on the Mariner 30. Gets it off to PJ, or excuse me, John, John Paul Anderson. Tried to cut it back up, not a lot there. Bring up second and nine. Minute 33 in the third quarter. Third quarter's gone by pretty fast. It has, but hey, oh, you're gonna jinx it. You said that before. Oh, that's true. Take that back. It's dragging. <laughs> Fakes the hand up. Now he flips it over to Castro. Castro trying to make a move, and two Mariner Marauders right there puts him down at the 25. Will bring up third and five. A little screen pass to Castro. Waverly there. And Riley there, 6'1 junior on the tackle for Mariner. This is a big third and five for Mariner here. They, they, they need really to need to stop here if they want any chance of getting back in this football game. Showing blitz, John Paul to the left of Ziomis. Bo Burns, a single receiver here on the near side. And they hand it off to Ooh, JP. That's gonna, I think he's gonna get that. Anderson. JP. Jay, I think they're going to give that to him. I think he's he needed to get down to about the 20, and he did. He got to the 19. Yeah, so. Ron right there on the line. Ronnie, you saw that all the way. Yeah, he got it all the way. Confirm. Same play. Same play up the middle, and this time it'll be good for another four or five before brought down by big 55. Abraham, and that will end the third quarter. We head to the fourth. GP knocking one more time on the door. Start of the fourth quarter here. Glacier Peak and Mariner, a 4A Wesco showdown here. 28-6 Grizzlies. They're and saying first and four, but I think that really means sec isn't it second and four? It is. Does he give it to Anderson? He does, and good pursuit on the far side there by Abraham. Yeah, I don't think he got anything on that. That kind of read zone there. He kind of held it there in the bread yeah, basket that for a while. De delayed play there didn't do him any favors. If you're a Mariner fan, you got about 11 minutes and 55 seconds to really turn the corner here. They Six need a huge. points on the board for the night, and that's just not going to do it. Nope. They hung. They gave Blake Stevens a heck of a battle, actually, and then until they pulled away, they overtime lost to Cascade. 
Mark Stewart in his third year. Here's Glacier Peak. Third and four. Down to the 13. Ziomis finds oh, that just be... enough, and he's right at the first down marker. I don't know that they're going to give him that. They're showing fourth down. He's going to be about a yard short. Well, what do you do here, Tim? Well, you could put it away with a field goal, make it 31-6, and just make them have to score that many more. I, I think I kicked the field goal from here. See it is fourth and one, but I, I don't know. I just would like – I think I'd like to get 31 on the board and within the fourth quarter, and you're mm. up by 25 points, and you got to make them score five times or four or five times at least. Braden Corwin out with Evan Christie. Boy, the Cal Bears threatening to score one more time with four seconds left in the second. The kick is oh, up and it's blocked. And they fall on it. That's, yeah, I still like the, I still like the play. I mean, it, I think you, you know, it gets blocked, but uh, I still like the call. You mm. get the 31 on the board. Big 51, Manyweather there with the block, six foot senior. And at least that might give Mariner a little bit of something to feel good about as they start. Definitely a morale boost there blocking the kick. Yeah, with 11, just under 11 to go here on this Friday night. Friday the 13th. Now, are you superstitious, Tim? Not really. You'd stay on the 13th floor? Well, there is no 13th floor. <laughs> <laughs> Mello gets up to the 25. Although when you're in Europe, they do have a 13th floor. But oh, yeah, in America, they don't, they don't, they don't have yeah, that. They don't care about much in Europe, do they? They don't. Everybody smokes in Europe, too. That's what you're telling me. Every, every, my, everybody. My daughter's in London right now. She's and probably going to come back a smoker. No, just kidding. Well, I, who knows? No. Who knows? She's actually such a rough gig over there. She's in Paris this weekend. Oh, that is rough. Yeah, it's just. I feel bad. Yeah, you should. Second down and five. They get it to Mello one more time on the right side. And he. Nice yard. Now a flag, a late flag. Oh, that. Yeah, Josh Erling has been chirping something. I see his arms out on the last play as well. Number 19 for Glacier Peak. See what's going on here. I think it's going to go against number 64 on Mariner. A little extra here. Yeah, that's, well, that's what you call a frustration penalty if it goes on Mariner. That's the offensive lineman there and punter, Scrabeck. Personal foul, and it does go on Mariner. They were going to be right close to the first down marker, and the only thing that did for Mariner was stop the clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Genius. Genius. Exactly what they didn't want here. going to cost him 15. Oh, here we go. There's the ref. Dead ball, personal foul, ball, offense. Personal foul against the Marauders. That'll cost him 15. Third down. Tim not happy as we're watching what's going down in Berkeley. Looks like Cal just scored to go up 17 to 3 and at the end with no time left in the half. Painful. Be some adjustments That's at halftime here. Cougars I got to put it together. Second and 14. Throwing now. Fahman, it's complete. And that's a, oh, that's a big play for the Mariner Marauders. Second and 14, and he picks up about 24. And that was Pesterkoff throwing to Fama, the quarterback. Trickery. There's some Tim Foolery. They need it right now. What a big play there for the Marauders. Now, Mariner's going to be a little bit off their game plan, probably having to go to the air quite a bit here. This time they hike it to Mello. Mello making something to the right of first down. Man, it takes a whole bunch of tacklers to bring him down. A lot of extra hits, a lot of kids pointing at people. Oh, and there's a late flag again. I think that's going to be another, unsport that's going to be another unsportsman. 
chip foul or personal foul. See where they're marking that. We have had quite a oh, few. Oh, this time it's against Glacier Peak. See if Ron saw that. You got anything for us, Ronnie, on that one? <laughs> He's got dark, Ron. Ron Henthor in the wedge. Can you hear us, Ronnie? Yeah, I can get you right now. I I couldn't see anything. There's too many people between me and, uh, and what? the play. What? That's never stopped you before. Come on, man. It's the other side of the field, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a painful one for Glacier that Peak. Is... I didn't see it. For, didn't couldn't see it from here. Well, they had a big first down pickup on that trickery play. Here we go. Now, if Fama takes it back. And he takes it himself. And there's still bodies flying everywhere well after the whistle. That time, Paul Malfi. <laughs> I think there's a lot of testosterone <laughs> and anger lot going of, on down there. There's a lot of juice. If you haven't heard, number two Clemson falling in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. I, I think it's the curse of Friday the 13th, and the Cougs look like they're they're in real danger of getting upset here by Cal. That is going to put the rankings and everything in a blender. Uh, yes, everything's going to be in a tailspin. God. Second down and 10 yards to go. Fama going deep. He's got CJ. Too much. Too much, and Evan Manis kind of gives him a little shot right when he's about to throw it and put had some good pressure on him. Good coverage there, Nathan. Aganaga, number three on the coverage for Glacier Peak. It's a great name. Just never get used to that. I know. I can say it all night. Aganaga. <laughs> that was excellent, by the way. Got a new light in the booth tonight. The five-tool player, although he was down to three tools, but we we, we were slowly, him yeah. for leaving the booth too many times. Third and ten. Oh, look at that! Still going. Mello with the ball, and he's still and Anchor's oh. trying to pull it out. And he finally does. Is there a whistle? And Anchor's oh, going no. out now. There's a flag. I, there's a lot of Pesterkoff is getting some business. And now coaches have to come out. See who they're going to – they can throw that on either team. See who that's <laughs> going to go against. You can see the – and the captain there, anchor the newsmaker. This is the not the kind of news he wants to be making. Here we go. As you can see the breath, it's getting nice and – Chilly. In the, chilly in the mid-40s here. On a fall evening. And Anchors be coming out as you see I him. I think that might have been against him. He was backing him up and kind of threw him back a little, see what they say. We know it's going to be a personal foul. Personal foul, Glacier Peak. This just in. You called that one. They're they're both kind of antagonizing both sides. They're 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 getting chippy. Yeah. And again, once again, this ball game just slows right down to a screeching Gosh, halt with 8:24. There's there over been tonight? four or five. A lot of turnovers. Last count. A lot of personal fouls. They're still talking about it too. I think what they're what they got to do is figure out where that's going to be marked at from. Right. That's, I think that's the Funky only question about this. High school rule here. It's like the Cubs national game last night. Four and a half hours. Yeah. Can they throw him out of the game for that? I, they can they can throw not, him out of the game? Probably not for just that. I, I don't. If he starts saying getting chippy with had, the ref. How many? But can he get can he get personal uh, unsportsmanlike? Can he get multiple? Is Do there, they do there, that in high school? I, I, don't, I don't know. What do you mean? You're asking me? I don't know. They you're change the, the rules every day in high school. Yeah, but you are like. the rule book. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's still – well, he's got his helmet off. 
Oh. Oh, now it's saying Mariner. What? So, so that's why. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I think Jimmy Carter. Yep. Dead ball. We got dead ball. Personal foul. Against the Grizzlies. We got dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. Way. Offset. First down. Offsetting penalties. A personal foul on Glacier Peak and an unsportsmanship like on Mariner, and they offset. What a break. Wow. So it should be play over in theory. No, it's What's that, Ron? It's, oh, we can't hear you, Ronnie. It's first down because he made the first down before the penalties. So The chain game, man, they're looking at their GPS like, where in the heck am I going? If they're wearing a Fitbit, they got like <laughs> 10,000 steps right there. <laughs> it's a workout. Glad you guys got it sorted out out there. Kind of confusing down it here. Is, it's a little confusing. And I don't think the refs have it sorted out. They're still talking about it. One one of the setbacks of high school football is when there's a flag, they just it just drags on and on, and they talk about it and go back and forth, and you got players neat sitting down on the field. I should have brought my sleeping utensils. <laughs> sleeping utensils. <laughs> Jimmy had to go over and explain it to uh, to Mark Stewart over there too. My yeah, you got to explain it to both sides, and here they come to Nick Bender. And, Man, didn't they? They already announced it once. Every time this happens, you know, I, it just I hearken back to that, that fall cool night in the Skagit Valley where Glacier Peak played Mount Vernon, and they ended up that game was like eight hours game. long. I know they lost. There were that's late at that point. Glacier Peak used to have the most <laughs> untimely penalties, and they ended up losing that because of a penalty. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, I very much know what you're talking. That was our first season. We had a, yeah, they went up on the road to Mount Vernon. Should have easily beat Mount Vernon that I year. I think they they made a training film that night for officials what not to do. Okay, back to some high school football. The clock starts 8:14 left. Fama, he's going deep again. He's got CJ open. They just can't quite get the timing. Akanaga right there with him. They kind of both fell into the long jump pit. <laughs> did. did you see that? I did. <laughs> Luckily, that's some soft sand over there. <laughs> well, you know, track season's around the corner. <laughs> Not quite, but it'll seem like well, it. Well, you know. It'll be here before I was know thinking it. about, you know, the great uh, – get a little teaser. Maybe we can get the, uh, some of the bumper music uh, in a couple weeks or something, Todd. But uh, the, the great podcast, Something About Nothing, coming up here late October – we, you could talk about the Olympic sports that you love, Tim. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah. I think that will give us more of an international flavor. Harrison up the gut, and he is met quickly by Glacier Peak defensive lineman. Speaking of international, you see in the – Holt the, there the, with the tackle. The soccer, oh. U.S. soccer team doesn't qualify for the World Cup. It's Unbelievable. Like, I'm not a soccer boring. guy. I, I am every four years. And well, I like the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, the World Cup's great, and now we don't get to watch them. It's like that's di very that's a real setback to the soccer community. It's a real setback. According to the people who know anything about soccer, it's unfathomable that the U.S. is as bad as they are. Yeah. We lost to a country that had like five people. Did we, we lose have 330 to like Tobago million. or something, or who? Do we, uh, Trinidad? <laughs> or did you say Trivago? Tobago? Tobago. Oh, Trinidad <laughs> and Tobago or Tobago? I mean, I, we lost potato, to some team potato. we should have never lost. Third and nine. If anyone still cares, Fama, nice job getting out of trouble. He just whips it, incomplete. I think he was just trying to get rid of that one. He had a lot of pressure coming. The magnet there almost got a handle on it. 28-6-7-0-7 left to go in this game. <laughs> Trivago, <Yeah>. Trivago. <laughs> That's a geography lesson for all. 
No, it's Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, you're yeah. right. See? Yeah, see? Did you say that before? I did. You okay. Call, you accused me of saying a different name. Well, it's... Like, Trivo like the Hotel Travago or whatever. Yeah. Hey, they're featuring, they're prepping uh, here on ESPN. we got in the booth going Washington, Arizona State tomorrow. Your team, my Arizona alma mater. State. But you'll be rooting for the Huskies, <laughs> which I just can't get my head around that. <laughs> I'm horrible. It's, it's terrible. I don't know that I will. Fourth and nine. Fame's getting chased. Oh. Erling! Oh, he, he strips the ball. the ball! And it's Glacier Peak football! Josh Erling! And he's all over him. Erling's, Erling's been everywhere tonight. I think he wants a T-shirt. I was going to say, does that he's, get him a oh, tee? My, and he strips the ball. That could be a game. That's a game. That could have closed the door on this game. So he might be, he might be eligible. Put him up. Put him on the board. Ronnie, you have any... <laughs> Didn't, can't oh, get faster. You. Get this game over. Uh, oh, I see. Ron, uh, the Wedge Henthorn, second and three, they're going to say, for Glacier Peak. Long count here. Finally gets in. They get it to Briggs one more time. Briggs oh, up that's through gonna, the hole, I and he gets a Glacier Peak first be down. A, might be a face mask. Really? I do see the flag saw, now. Let's see. What, oh, it's hold. They're going to be holding against Glacier Peak. And that that kills Glacier Peak. It takes away their first down and stops the clock. They had the clock moving. You know, they pick up a first down. They can start chew, just keep chewing that clock and kind of. How many holding penalties tonight? We're going to have to. That'll be a topic we'll have to ask them about. That's got to be their fifth or sixth holding penalty. Yeah, that, I feel like they still aren't in the their typical 12 to 16 per game that they were for many years. That's right. Austin Scriver, the center. He's done a good job this year snapping the ball. That was an he issue has. the last couple of years, and Austin's coming in. It's time they get it to Briggs. Briggs Alvo's in trouble. He's going to lose. Second. Yardage. He's going to lose probably four or five on that. So you're going to be looking at like third and 15 or so. Great play there by the Mariner player. Oh, and that holding penalty, that's a, just a, that just killed him. Gorham with the tackle. 6'5", 265. The senior for Mariner. Big boy. Now everybody waiting. Clock ticking, though. Clock the enemy right now at 5.25, and probably just not quite enough time for Mariner to really get anything going here. Trips right. Listen. Go ahead, Ron. Is he almost back? He looks for the screen. Now he's going to go deep, oh, and he's, he's got, got a wide open Grizzly. He catches it, that and it's 36 McKenzie. Patrick McKenzie, the freshman, get in there, Patrick. To the five, oh, can't get it thrown out of bounds. And he's so close, and Patrick Waverly. McKenzie's looking for the flag. My goodness, the freshman. And he almost had it, and he was wide open. We were talking to defensive coordinator Rudd tonight about him. What a play we were, by yeah, McKenzie. Yeah, we were asking if, if uh, we'd see some Patrick McKenzie tonight. How about that? Oh, that's and, worthy of a and replay. And we take credit for our Patrick McKenzie for starting him out up in the booth yes, here. Yes, we're the reason they, he's out a, there. They won like an auction or something. And Yep. And now Baby Z going to go. Usually when people spend some time with us, they're never the same in a bad way. And I'm seeing Baby Z kind of favor his left shoulder a little he bit. He must have taken a hit right at the end. So who do we got in his QB? Well, he got... Uh, St. Jean in now, Colton St. Jean. Uh -oh. I don't know why Kramer in there. We talked about a snap, and Briggs falls on it. The rhythm's off. Aiden Ziomas comes out, and the rhythm's off a little bit. No, Ron, I wasn't. I saw that St. Jean had some snaps uh, maybe last week or the week prior that I missed. I don't know, Ron. I don't know why Kramer's not in. Spencer Kramer, the 6'5 junior. 
But now it looks like St. Jean, who also is 6'4", is sophomore, directing traffic, wearing number 16 for Glacier Peak. Second and 17, second and goal from the 17. Briggs spins. That play just took a little bit too long to develop there. See Evan Christie hobbling a little bit. As you can see, a great field camera there by Steve Holly. Abraham with the third and 17. Third and goal at the 17. Where they go from first and first and goal on about the one to to this. Clock is ticking though, so it is. Glacier Peak's happy with that. Cold night here. On Friday the 13th. There's the quarterback. He's going to go for oh. Evan Christie, who is hobbled. And St. Jean. Fourth down. Now, do you put the... You put the three points on the board here is what I think you do. Yeah, you see if uh, Corwin can punch it in. It looks like he's coming out, Braden. This one's going to be a little shorter. This should only be about a, what, 30. Let's see where they mark it. He's going to go to the 33-yarder maybe. Yep. Yeah. What do you, what's, we'll see. what's he, he wanting credit for? The right, the prediction. Let's see if he goes. So, did you sit there? Thirty-three yard field goal attempt. Braden Corwin from the right hash. Christie, the hold is good. It's Whoa, up. I think he just. It's no good. It's a little. This he, one's wide left from the <laughs> right hash. It went right wide left. As my wife says. A big hook to the left on that yeah, one. Yeah, that one. Uh, Shankopotamus on that one. So while you're taking a break up there, I want you to figure out who we got from the POG, man. <laughs> I knew it. I knew Ron it. Ron likes to know it about halftime. We'll be back after this. Did you know that Speedway Chevrolet is part of the Lee Johnson Auto family? That means 84 years of serving you the LJ way. Need a truck? We have the perfect truck to fit your needs. Half tons, one ton, two-wheel drives, and four-wheel drives. Our finance specialists are here to help you, whether you have good credit or bad credit. We're just off Highway 522 at West Main Street in Monroe. Lee Johnson Auto Family, the LJ Way. That's some uh, serious analyzing of our predictions at the break there, Tim Boyle. Yeah, no, none of us were real close. I think everybody thought... Uh, I don't know why the clock's running, but go the ahead. Clock, I think everybody thought the game was going to be real close within maybe a field goal or something, and it just kind of surprising. Some Oh, somebody's hurt on the field. GP player. It's a GP player. I can get it a little bit in my binoculars. We'll see here. Looks like maybe just a cramp, but uh, I'm not sure if they're going to put time back on the clock because it was a ticking there for quite a while. And that's Drew Johnson, who's coming back tonight. He's been hurt, and so hopefully he's okay. Oh, yeah, Drew Johnson. How many games has he missed? He Not sure. Banged up a little bit before. Then you hate to see somebody get banged up with two minutes left in yeah. kind of a game that's out of, out of reach. It just You hate to see that. We hate to see it any, at any time, but... You really hate to see it when they're just kind of garbage time play. Now we're getting, looking for a time. It looks like that Glacier Peak trying to get a timeout. That, they're, it's going to should be a flag where they had 12 men on the field. Harrison got a first down and a couple yards more, the big fella. And Glacier Isaiah. Peak had 12 men on the field, and they were trying to call a timeout, and the refs didn't see that. Wow. Got away with one. They should have pulled Aaron Rodgers on him. <laughs> they should have. Wish every, ticking at yeah, two minutes. It's under, under two minutes to go here as you see at the bottom of your screen. First and ten here for Mariner. 
Fama takes it. He's going to launch it, trying to go to Brown, overthrow. You know, oh, and there's a flag coming out of the backfield. That's usually going to be like a defensive holding. Or it could and that's, be, yeah, that's yeah, what that's the judge you? was saying, black judge, back judge. Generally, that's what that is, so they're going to catch a break there. And I'll tell you what, Fama's got – he's had some open receivers, and he seems to overthrow them on those plays almost every time tonight. Not if he quite gets that there. just a little bit dialed in, they have some more points on the board. No doubt. Hey, if you can show that on the replay, you can, all I had to do was move about 10 feet to my left, and I could have caught that ball. <laughs> <laughs> Ron wants to get put me in coach. I – I'm just waiting for the wedge one day to just just run out there run out there and catch it and go for a touchdown. And it could happen. It's the ultimate holding wedge. defense first down. The ultimate wedge move. Oh, we got to get our player of the game. What are you thinking, Tim Boyle? We're going to have to have a powwow at the, at the next. Really? We're going to have to powwow at the next I mean, but uh, toss commercial him, break. What are you thinking? I think it should be Sarah Elvick. 24. Sarah Elvig, yeah, Evan Manis. He's gotten one already, but that's okay. They get it off to Big 12, and he's still oh rumbling, stumbling. He breaks loose. Can you loose. believe that? Pesterkoff. And, and touchdown, Mariner. Wow. wow. Unbelievable run. Raj. And he just ran over people. He did. The that was that guy. quite a jaunt there. Unbelievable. Pesterkoff. Pesty Pesterkoff. Is that who that was? Yeah, number was. 12, right? Number 12. Right? What yeah. a run. That was 50 plus. Garbage time run, but hey, they'll take it. Well, it Let's look yeah. at the predictions. Let's it look at the matter, predictions right? better. Sure looks better on the scoreboard. 28-12. Now besides, we'll see. you see that guy? Yeah, that was a tremendous run. That was a heck of a run. That was a little beast mode He's run. It looked like Earl Campbell again. <laughs> Just running people over. We got a new, looks like a new place kicker they're going to try here. Fama there, but Kuna, Gabriel Kuna, the junior on to see if he can get this point after. Fama looking for the hold. It's up the lefty, chip and it is good it. if there's no flags. 28-13, back with the last part of this game after this. We are all frustrated with the high cost of heating and cooling our homes. At GNS, we are completely changing the way you keep your home comfortable. Our Mitsubishi ductless heat pumps allow you to control the temperature in each room separately all of which can be controlled from your smartphone or tablet. Because we are the mini split experts here in Washington, we can design a perfect system for you, one that will oh, save always... you a lot of money on your utility bill. Call GNS Heating, Cooling, and Electrical today or visit us at gsheating.com. Back here live, 135 left in the game. Our player of the game, Speedway Chevrolet player of the game, is going to be Tim Boyle. Baby, don't call me the toddler Z. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't don't uh, don't be blaming us for the scoreboard. We pull that in from the score booth, and they are not hitting enter. So the score is actually twenty-eight thirteen. Well, that's Correct. what it says up. But okay, I see. What yeah, you're the saying. scoreboard on the bottom. We are we are connected magically to the scoreboard operator, but they need to. Uh, Press the enter button. Hit return. <laughs> yeah, return. <laughs> so, Ron, did you catch that baby Z player of the game? He's He hasn't gotten one this year, and we kind of – he should have gotten a couple, but we've spread it around a little. He definitely deserves it tonight. You don't think I gave him one already? Not sure. Maybe it was last nope. year. There's a just a rip of a kick there, and Castro – Takes it back oh, out of bounds. A lot of Marauders Late still hit coming. Late out of bounds there, but they didn't. They're not going to throw the flag. He's uh. Up. Patrick McKenzie received one vote and for player of the game. Did he? <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, also <laughs> with he didn't get enough first just... place votes, but he was he was in the he was in the running. I mean, well deserved, Sarah Elvig. Yeah, Sarah, yeah, I, was, I, I yeah. <laughs> 
We'll give it to Jake. He's uh, he's probably down there rooting. I was going to give it to Todd, but he left the booth like seven <laughs> hey, times. Hey, listen, the, I had to replace batteries. I had to go down and check Jeez. for pizza. He had to. He's so busy. He had to find a second place, a second home. <laughs> See right. who's out at quarterback here with a buck thirty left to go, and it's St. Jean again, number sixteen. He's a big kid. Yeah, six four. The backups are six four and six five. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Is he on the hoops team? Man, I should be. And oh, look ooh, at that horse call. That's a, it like a almost. nasty tackle. Anthony Collins. But, I want a big apology all season. Been saying Alex Collins. It's not. That's. You didn't but that's you could have butchered it a lot worse like you do with other names. <laughs> that's kind of that's pretty close. I'll for take you. that as a compliment. Okay, now l listen, the backup parents are watching. I remember I had a kid in. Yeah. Right? At the end of the game, your kid goes in, he's a freshman, he's a sophomore, a junior, and all you can do is just glued to that. Yeah. You're like, Oh, he's in. Well that again, Anthony Collins has started, he plays all over the place, so uh and I want to thank Tony but, Ziomas for bringing that to my attention. But uh, Saint, we got St. Jean. Or what? Yeah, St. Jean was Saint the quarterback. Jean, yeah. We got that one right. Looks like, and there's uh, Anthony Collins back to punt. Well, it's, second well, it's only second, second down. down. That's an interesting uh, well, we formation there. Sorry. Uh, maybe you know I need to be almost, a backup. They were kind of in victory formation. It was a little different formation. Delay. Offense. See, they just oh, wanted, there we they go. wanted to run the clock down as much as they I see what there. my problem was. There's so many problems. But they're going to go in victory formation. There you there. go. And that's, the be that's the favorite formation of any team is the victory formation. No doubt. So Glacier Peak, they will head to Goddard Stadium next Friday night and take on the Kamiak Knights. Now Glacier Peak's the front runner for that third position because yep. they've beaten Jackson, they've beaten uh, Mariner, and they've beaten uh, Cascade, and those are all the kind of the four teams that are buying for that third and fourth spot. So Glacier Peak kind of almost ensured themselves at least the fourth spot at the very minimum, but a really good shot at number three. My question is, what does that do for them? Because isn't it uh, both three and four go to Kinko? Or one of them plays yeah, uh, SPL or whatever. Stay that. tuned. We'll break it all down for you next next time we're here. Mariner <laughs> heads out to Skagit Valley to take on the Bulldogs of Mount Vernon next Friday night as we wait. Ron Henthorn for our player of the game, our Speedway Chevrolet player of the game here on STSBN. Aiden, baby Z, Z Omis. Look at the wedges down there, yakking it up with the head rest. He's there. talking, thanks, yes, to Jim Carter. Oh, he's grabbing the body pack, I'll bet. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. I wonder if he was asking him about that call. I asked him about it. I know. Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't I don't count. No, we, you're, <laughs> <laughs> but, but the wedge was down there, so it seemed like a pertinent question. Yeah, he probably didn't hear us talk about calling it or uh, what the new rule was. See if the wedge can get in there and grab Baby Z. Oh, number two just kind of came flying through the crowd there. Well, for Glacier Peak, this uh, makes it feeling a little bit better about themselves. They are beat up and had, had some struggles there. A lot of credit there to Monroe and Lake Stevens. They are obviously the cream of the crop right now in the 4A. Late, yeah, it's. I mean... Uh, Everybody knows one and two is pretty much sealed up. Now, what, who's going to – the end of the year is going to come down to at Monroe. That's going to be a huge game. I like. I think I like Monroe this year to finally get revenge. Oh, here we go. Let's go down to – Ronnie. Ronnie with our Speedway Chevrolet play of the game. Aiden Ziomis, number one, the quarterback. Hi, Ron Henthorne down here with uh, Aiden Ziomis. Aiden uh – Quite a game tonight. Got a back and forth couple of places, a few turnovers, but you ended up pulling out the game and ran a great show out there tonight. How'd you feel about it? Thank you. Um, I feel good. You know, things didn't start the way I wanted in the first quarter. Uh, I just made a few mistakes. You know, just things weren't just going my way. But I think my team really rallied around me and they helped pick me up, which built my confidence. I think we were able to come back and make an improvement in the second half and. I just really thank my teammates for when they see me down, they pick me up. 
Well, they did give a good job keeping you up. You had some help out there from Manus and the rest of your team, and they made some nice receptions for you, too. Yeah, you know, I just want to say shout-out to all my receivers. You know, they all played a great game, coming up with big catches, you know. And just, we have so many weapons out there that it's just, it's easy. I can go anywhere with the ball. Did you get bumped up a little bit there at the end? I'm sorry, what? Did you get hurt a little bit at the end? Uh, I just got a little stinger in my arm, but I'm fine. The coach is just trying to rotate some people in. That was probably a good time to do it. They didn't need you right then. Okay, Chevrolet player of the game. I got this t-shirt out here. I want you to hold it up in front of you. Kind of face make, up that camera. Sure you you know the routine. Yeah, You've been here before. Tell just, him he's going to get another one because that's that's uh, that's just uh, for show. That's I'll a placeholder team. Right, hold it up there. There it is. Aiden's the almost shake. Speedway Chevrolet player of the game. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Ron. He takes his shirt get, away from get, him. Get him. I out. love that guy. <laughs> get him. <laughs> we need to get Ronnie a heater. It's freezing out down there. That is so great. Aiden Ziomas. <laughs> no one does it like the wet. Nobody. Nobody. 28-13. Grizzlies come away with a 4A win. For everybody, I want to thank the Hollies. Of course, Ron the Wedge, 